Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto becomes a dragon biju in fairy tale, before I start, please support for more amazing content, and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Yugistian and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1 A New World with Dragons and Demons. What is this place? I thought Rakuto Jiji would send me into a normal place like the shinobi world. A certain young man walks aimlessly in a place that seems deserted by life. The place feels really hot and the young man is sweating so much since he have been walking seven hours straight without resting. He feels like he is walking in a never-ending rocky place filled with rock created from lava and magma centuries ago. The further he continues to walk, the higher the temperature of the surroundings seems to rise. All that the young man can do is sigh. The young 17-year-old man has spiky yellow hair that almost imitates that of his son, cerulean blue eyes that rivals a clear sky, with three sets of whisker birthmarks on both sides of his cheeks. He is wearing a long sleeve shirt, with black collar extending from around the collar and shoulders, down the front and sleeves, including his belt, and his sandals are also colored black. The rest of his outfit is colored orange. He is also wearing a short sleeved red coat with black flame pattern in the hemline, and a hood at the back of his head. At the back of his coat, there is an inscription that displays the word Sage Hokage. He also dons a forehead protector in his very forehead, a small pouch on his left leg and right portion of his back. He also has a special sword sheeted on his left waist. I need to find a way to return to Kanoha as soon as possible. It has been more than seven years since my existence has been erased in my own dimension. I bet everyone believes I am already dead. The blonde sigh. I hope what I have done have changed the recent shinobi system. Then, a sudden earthquake occurred. This alerts the blonde. This is no ordinary earthquake. Since he can sense nature much better now due to natural chakra that is flowing inside his own chakra system without entering sage mode, he can sense if the event is a natural phenomena or someone something is causing it. Then he felt a huge thing flying towards his location at high speed that seems impossible due to the latter's huge bulk. What is this? I can feel a huge power from that thing. The young muttered as he takes his battle stance. The flying thing landed violently in the ground. The creature created craters beneath its feet on the very surface where it landed. The creature is about the size of a biju, with red scales covering its body, and cream color scales from its chest down to the stomach, and has a set of large tattered wings, and has eyes that display supremacy over everything. The dragon Naruto is surprised. He have seen monsters and demons in his career, but this is the first time that he actually saw a dragon. It's a dragon. It's a dragon Databeo. He starts to shout happily and jumps excitedly. Foolish human. How dare you enter my sacred ground. The dragon roars at the blonde, fire spitting out of its mouth as if threatening the human in front of him. However, much to the dragon's surprise, the child is just jumping with joy upon seeing him him. Don't make a fool of me human. Get out of here before I crush you. Why well, I am sorry I have entered your territory without your permission. I didn't mean to, dragon-san. Naruto frantically waves his hand in front of the dragon. He is already used to this kind of behavior, since he have nine prideful biduous within him for quite a while until recently. Their consciousness have already left his mindscape along with the sage of the six paths before he enters this world, leaving only their chakra and wasidam within him. But that's great that you can talk. I have so many things that I want to ask you Dragon-san. The dragon is surprised. Ordinary humans would already be running for their dear life just upon seeing a dragon. He can't sense any fear from the kid in front of him. This reminds him of someone. Then, upon looking at the boy, the dragon felt an enormous power that the kid is hiding. The dragon starts to glare at the kid. Don't talk like we are equals kid. What is the reason why you are here? The dragon roared, shaking the ground in the process. Naruto, seeing the dragon is serious, starts talking in a serious manner as well. Honestly, I don't know how I got here. I am just wandering around and I don't know where should I go since I am not from this world. Staring at the dragon eye to eye. Not from this world. The dragon stares directly into the boy's eyes. There is no sign that the kid is lying. The dragon also know that there were other existing dimensions aside from where they dwell. So this story is not new for the creature. However, he decides to ask the blonde some additional questions to further verify the truth in his words. What kind of place do you came from Brad? I am from a different dimension, the shinobi world. I am a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto answered truthfully. Shinobi world. Hidden Leaf. Does this mean he is not from Adolas? The dragon calms down digesting the information. If what you are saying is true, how the hell did you got here in Earthland? So this world is called Earthland Naruto nods. This will be a long story. It may take several hours. Do you still want to hear me out Dragon-san? As much as the creature wouldn't like to admit, he became interested to the boy's offer. 
He cannot sense any malicious or ill intent within the words of the young blonde. He can also see in the eyes of the boy that he has already been through a lot. Those eyes should not be of someone of that age. Very well. As you can see, I am the ruler of this place. Entering my place without permission will result to death. But since you are not from around here, I will make an exception. Entertain me with your story as a payment for stepping on my sacred ground. So dragons are prideful but kind. He reminds me of Karama Naruto Remebers of his old furball friend. As of now, I will need to get his trust so I can also get additional information regarding this world. Gathering information is what Kakashi Sensei always reminds me if I happen to be on a difficult situation. Besides, the dragon looks interested in my story and I don't think he will harm me unless I take the initiative. I don't think it will not hurt to tell him about what happened in my past Naruto sat down in cross-legged position. Okay Dragon-san. Everything starts from Octo he was then cut out by a roar. Don't call me Dragon-san I am Igneel, the fire dragon. State your name before you start your story. Sorry for that, Igneel-san. Naruto scratches the back of his head with his right arm while giving the dragon a foxy grin. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, I am a toad sage of Mount Mabyakuzen and the Rakudame Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. The dragon nods as he lays his body on the ground staring in the blonde. Then the blonde resumes on talking with the dragon regarding his past. He starts from his birth to childhood, Ninja Academy, Sasuke's departure until the events of the Fourth Shinobi World War, in as much detail that he can. However, he refrained on telling the dragon about his abilities, techniques and powers. The storytelling lasts for about seven hours. Big Neil listens intently with Naruto's story. The boy's life is quite a roller coaster ride. He have so many painful experiences even as a child. But he didn't give up on his village's people and still strived on becoming a leader so that they would acknowledge his existence. What amazes the dragon is Naruto's will to never give up, no matter what the situation is, and dedication to his friends. Big Neil acknowledges the boy's life and believes the story of the blonde shinobi. Very well. You have quite entertained me with your story kid. You have the eyes of a warrior and a heart of leader. So the true reason why you came here to Earthland is to return to your own world, since your existence is the cost on performing a powerful move. Igneel asks casually. Yes, that's right. Do you know any technique that will allow me to do so Igneel-san? Naruto asks the dragon curiously. No. I don't know anything about that. But I know about some events that people from other dimensions like you were transported here. So technically, there is a way for you so you can come back to your world. I see. Looks like I have to continue on traveling in this world so I can find additional information. Naruto puts his right hand in his chin in a thinking pose. But before I can find information regarding that, I must adapt first into this world. Say, Igneel san Does all the inhabitants in this world are dragons like you? A moment of silence float within the air until the dragon bursts laughing. Naruto wonders if he says something funny while giving a grin of his face. There are also humans here kid. If there weren't any, I could have killed you thinking that you are a bizarre creature. The dragon continues to laugh while Naruto seems to relax a bit, knowing that there were humans like him in this world. If you need to gather information, I will send you to the nearest town from here. However, to make your information gathering worthwhile, it would be best for you to join a guild. What is a guild? The guild is where a group of humans doing various things together to achieve their goals. Your guild can help you gather information or provide you information if one among them already have an information that you are looking for. I see. So the best move to do right now is to join a powerful and influential guild. Yes kid. That way you may also meet my son. He is a member of a certain guild. Huh? A baby dragon joining humans in a group? My son is a human. I adopted him and raise him and also trained him so he can use my dragon skills. Wow. Dragon skills. He might be powerful. Can you teach me those techniques as well? No, I have teached my son everything. I don't have any intention teaching anyone else. Naruto just nods while smiling. Even though he is a dragon, he can see that he loves his son so much. The thought reminds him of his own father. Why did your son leave you to join a guild? Actually, I am the one who left him. One of the reasons why he joins a guild is because he is looking for me. But I don't want to see him now as much as I would like to. Naruto would like to retort about the dragon's statement. However, he also remembers that his father have sealed Karama inside him right after his birth due to important reasons as well. So he believes that it is better not to butt in with that. Naruto, if you happen to meet my son, don't tell him that you have met me or I will never forgive you. Igneel said glaring at the blonde. Not just my son, but any other people that you may encounter. Don't tell them anything about you seeing a dragon. It is for your own good as well. I understand. Naruto nods once again. I'll be going then now. I apologize for taking your time Igneel-san. Where is the road to reach the closest town? 
Before you leave, let me test your abilities, Naruto. Igneal stood up from the ground and now giving a glare towards Naruto. Eh? Naruto is surprised by the sudden proposal from the dragon. Why? I can sense a power that rivals that of a dragon within you. That power should only be available from a dragon slayer. Dragon slayer power can only be obtained if a human is trained by a dragon. Naruto is then surprised by Igneal's statement. He is not trained by a dragon, but he knows how to use Ryugner Dragon Release Kekai Genkai, since it is the Kekai Genkai of the Juubi. He is concealing that power, but this dragon were still able to sense it. If you are not trained by a dragon, you must have a natural blood to become a dragon slayer to have such power. I want to train you to maximize your potential. But I want my only son to have my power. But I have an alternative offer for you. So I want to test your power. Igneal then starts to flap his mighty wings and starts to fly high. Hey. I haven't agreed yet Igneal-san. Naruto waves his hand to retort, but it is futile. Igneal starts to concentrate his power on his lungs, gives a deep breath as if preparing for a breath attack. Naruto narrows his eyes. This feeling this is a massive Katen attack. Naruto thinks on how to counter the incoming attack. He can counter the fire attack with a water attack however, since dragons are prideful, this might give a bad impression, and it may treat him as a threat. If he dodges it, Igneal will continue to attack until he uses one of his techniques. They also don't want to use the dragon release techniques, since it might hurt Igneal, since those techniques have super effective damage on mythical creatures, such as dragons or demons. So he just thought about the best possible response to Igneal's attack. Igneal then charges his attack from his mouth while continuously soaring high towards the sky. He stops after reaching the clouds, concentrates, then blasts a powerful flaming breath attack. The flames from the attack is so concentrated that even the clouds turn to ashes upon its release. Naruto creates a set of hand signs. Then he also concentrates his chakra from his lungs. Then releases it with full force from his mouth. Pain. Dikyaku no Jutsu. Naruto uses one of the Ichiha's standard Katen techniques. It may be a standard technique, however, since Naruto input several more times chakra into the technique, including the density of his chakra, the technique is enough to counterbalance Igneal's flaming breath attack. The two massive fire attacks collide in midair. Large shockwaves were produced by the impact. Naruto braces himself due to the shockwave, while Igneal loses his flight balance for a moment. The two flame attacks fights for dominance, and within a few seconds, neutralizes each other. The two sets of fires disappears into thin air, causing the atmosphere surrounding them. Felt like the wind has invisible flame that can burn anything to ashes. Igneal, satisfied by what he have seen, landed violently on the ground near Naruto. So you are a fire element user like me, Naruto. The dragons stare at the blonde. Naruto wanted to retort that he can also perform other elemental attacks, but it will not do any good in this moment. If he told the dragon that he can use water attacks, this may make the dragon realize that he is being underestimated by a human, straining the good terms that they already have. Yes. That's right Igneal-san. Naruto just nods. Amazing. To have the same element as of me, and also having a power that rivals one of my powerful attacks, I can see great potential within you. I think that is enough for me to recognize you as a dragon slayer. Igneal seems to be in a good mood after they attack exchange. The dragon realizes that the power this kid will be needed for the incoming crisis in the near future, and seeing him as a good-natured boy like his son, he needs to prepare him for that near future. Dragon slayer? But my power didn't came from a dragon, and I am not trained by a dragon. Naruto retorted. I know. That's why I have decided that I need to make you a dragon slayer. But you have said that you want you have already taught your son all your skills to become a dragon slayer, and you will not teach those techniques to any other else, right? There are two ways to make someone a dragon slayer. First is that the person is needed to be trained by dragon, just like my son. The second way is to implant a dragon lacrima into a person making his attacks to have the same effect as that of a dragon slayer. Technically, you will become a dragon slayer of your specific element. Since you are a fire user, your attacks will be a fire dragon slayer based attacks. Wow. Naruto said in surprise. Just to clarify, I can use my normal skills like I have used to, but they will also have built-in dragon affinity in them. Yes. If you use the same fire attack earlier once you already have a dragon lacrima within you, it will be the same fire element attack, but it is the same as if a dragon have created that attack. That's cool. Naruto said excitingly, but he suddenly realizes something. First, he can perform multiple elemental attacks. If he is considered as a fire dragon slayer if he uses fire attacks, then he can also consider it as a wind dragon slayer if he uses his wind element attacks. Second, he remembers what the sage of the six paths have told him during his training, that dragon release is the most powerful elemental affinity. 
he can make a wind-based attack from dragon release, and it will be treated as both wind-based and dragon-based attacks. If his own wind attacks have built-in dragon affinity, and if he combones it with his own dragon release, it will technically make his own dragon attacks much more powerful. Wake up from your daydreaming kid. Igneil wakes up Naruto from his daydreaming. The decision will still be coming from you. Would you be accepting my dragon lacrima? Of course, Dadabeo. Naruto replied without hesitation. So you will not teach me any dragon slayer techniques and just use my usual techniques and it will still have the same effect as that of the dragon slayer techniques. Yes, that's right Naruto. Since you already have powerful skills from your own world, you will not need to learn dragon slayer attacks. Dragons only teaches dragon slayer attacks to their adopted sons. It will be up to the dragon lacrima based dragon slayers if they will create an attack based on their elemental affinity. But as I can see, you have a lot more arsenal of attacks within you, so you will not need to do that. Naruto nods from the information. Alright then, close your eyes. The dragon commanded to the blonde. I will implant my dragon lacrima within you, and I will also transport you to the nearest town, so that you cannot keep on track of my place in case you want to return here. Ah does that mean I will not be able to see you again when I reopen my eyes? Yes. It will be the best for the both of us. Igneil said seriously. Close your eyes, feel the lacrima that I will implant within you, then listen carefully to the things that I will tell you. Naruto nods, relaxes his muscles, then remains standing still and closes his eyes. As soon as Naruto's eyes closes, Igneil's claw touches Naruto's forehead protector, then a magic circle appeared on the ground where Naruto is currently standing. Naruto's body is then suddenly covered by flames. It is not your usual red flames, but golden flames with shining glitters. This is my dragon lacrima, Naruto. Humans who have dragon lacrimas will technically be considered as a dragon slayer, with the same powers as that of a dragon slayer trained by a dragon. Dragon slayers have a huge responsibility, that's why very few were chosen to become one. You have earned my trust, and I believe that you will use this power properly. Igneil said. Naruto nods without opening his eyes. The dragon lacrima automatically increases your recent abilities and powers. That's why you will need to train yourself on using this power and master it to the degree as that of a dragon slayer. Also, Dragon Slayer with Dragon Lacrima can also increase their abilities further by activating the Lacrima itself within their bodies. This will make the Dragon Slayer enter Dragon Force. Dragon Force will increase your power 2 to 3 times stronger than that of the passive enhancements that the Dragon Lacrima have already provided you after I implant it to you. Use these powers properly and you will reach the place that you have always wished to reach for. I see. I understand. I will continue to live with my ideals and protect those that are important for me. Thank you for this power, Igneil said. I promised you that I will use this power properly. That's a promise, Dadabeo. Naruto said while smiling, not opening his eyes. This will be a goodbye for now, Naruto. Igneil said. Ah, take care, Igneil. Naruto just gives the dragon his foxy grin. So is you. Farewell, young one. Naruto starts to disappear from the magic circle. This kid, I can feel that his power rivals my own, and I know that he is suppressing a lot of his powers. But I cannot sense any magic affinity in him. I believe we will see each other again. The magic circle flashes and within a blink of an eye, the young man disappears in front of the dragon. Naruto opens his eyes after sensing a different atmosphere. He is now in an outskirt near a town. Looks like Igneil really have transported him to the nearest town. As he is thinking about Igneil's parting words with him, he suddenly felt a heavy feeling within him. What's this? It feels like my power is overflowing. Naruto then without hesitation sits in a meditative position, then access his mindscape. In his mindscape, he felt an overwhelming power filling him. His powers are increasing into level that he didn't even expect. Is this the effect of the dragon lacrima? It might doubles my current chakra level and density. This is too much power. Then Naruto became more surprised by the other changes. The dragon lacrima doesn't only increases his base chakra level and density. It also increases the level and density of his hidden chakra, Itachi, Sasuke, Madara and Hashirama's chakra, his own Namakas, Yuzumaki, Senju and Achiha chakra, his stored by Akigu and Senjutsu chakra sealed in his forehead, the Senjutsu chakra naturally flowing inside his chakra circulatory system, and what surprises him the most. All of the Bijuus chakra including the Juubi's chakra have also doubled their chakra level and density. He also feels that his base strength, speed, reflex, durability and vitality have gone up into another notch. Boy, what kind of power is this? Naruto just said. If this is the passive effects of a dragon lacrima, what else if I activate what Igneil have called dragon force? Looks like I have some training to do to catch up with this overwhelming power-ups. But I will need to grab something to eat first I guess. 
it's been a freaking seven years ever since I have seen another human other than Rikidu Sen and Naruto wakes up from his mindscape, then runs happily towards the town. One week later. Night has come and the forest is now filled with darkness. All that you can hear are the sounds of rustling leaves and few owls chirping as the cold wind continues to blow gently shaking the trees in process. In top of one of the trees, a familiar blonde is standing silently, staring at his little booklet while reading some information that he have just gathered regarding this new world. The wind on top of the trees are quite cold and it continues to blow the Hokage's unruly spiky hair and the hemline of his coat. The figure of him standing on top of the trees gives a majestic feel to those who will see even his silhouette. Data gathering is not my forte. How come a pervert like Hiro Senen can have so much data in just a little time? Naruto mumbles to himself. He have been through five different towns after his encounter with Igneal. The place where the dragon have sent him is a place called Kingdom of Fiori. While on towns, he observes how people have lived their daily lives in this world and notices that there is much difference in his world than Earthland. People were living in a more peaceful and systematic environment. Everyone knows what to do and has something to do. As much as possible, everyone tries to prevent conflict and always try to resolve every conflict or misunderstandings through talking. Of course, there will always be thugs and bad guys. As much as he wants to take care of them, he just let them go and observe through the shadows so he can see how this world handles such loose ends. And there he discovers the thing that makes the difference. Just like an Anbu of Kanahagakur, a group of people appears to take care of the goons. However, if the Anbus are using assassination skills and chakra, this group of people are using an attack that they call magic people in this world, have been using magic for various things, such as running vehicles, industry and fighting. Naruto believes that magic is the thing that will help him return to his homeworld. He watch how does people in this world uses magic during that fight between the thugs and the new group of people through a rooftop. Magic felt very different from chakra. They have different feel, and also magics have specific affinity for every specific person. He cannot also feel any chakra from the magic users, so he summarizes that since he came from different world, he don't have such magic system in his body, and people here don't have chakra system on their own body. And also, even the magic users, or called wizards mages, cannot use magic to kill unless it is unavoidable. After the thugs have been arrested, he followed the group of people. They went straight to a building and welcomed by fellow mages. Observing this, Naruto have concluded that the group of people who uses magic are called guilds that Igneal have mentioned. Moving to the next town, he gathered information regarding which is the best guild in this place much to his surprise, everyone that he randomly asks gave him the same specific answer. A guild named Fairy Tail. The guild of Fairy Tail is located in the town called Magnolia Ha. But if people here are mages or wizards who uses magics, and I am a shinobi who uses chakra, will they allow me to join their guild? Naruto mumbles again on top of the tree where he is still currently standing. He stares then at the mountain range that is visible from his view. According to the information he have gathered, he will need to get across the mountain range to reach Magnolia where Fairy Tail Guild is located. He then remembers the what the great toad sage's premonition regarding his future. Fairies dancing everywhere. All his doubts vanishes in his mind in that instant. Now his eyes filled with determination and resolve. I will become a member of Fairy Tail, and I will definitely find a way to return to Kanoha. Here I come fairies to Bayo. As soon as he prepares to start leaping from one tree to another to lessen the traveling time like have normally used to in his own world, he then felt a sudden malicious aura out of nowhere. He stops his into his tracks then closes his eyes. This energy, no doubt this is magic, but this is the first time that I have felt such evil and strong magic in this place. This is somewhat near Bijuu's level. What's going on? He opened his eyes and dashes towards the source of the malicious magic. I'm starving to death. ILL gonna eat your souls. Within the darkness of the night, a giant demon looms over the edge of the forest. Each step of the demon creates an earthquake-like impact. It stares down angrily at a group of people who are staring in awe at the giant's sudden appearance. The group of people consists of several bizarre old men. They were the guild masters that represents each guild and conducting their regular meeting that is interrupted by the sudden appearance of the giant demon. In front of them are four young individuals and a cat. The three of them glaring at the giant and preparing for battle. Naruto landed on the roof of the sole building that is existing in the place. The building is where the meeting of the guild masters were currently taking place. He also notices the three young individuals, by the look, is around the same age as of him. From the looks of it, the three will be facing the demon to protect the elders. Since they have that serious aura and will to fight, Naruto decides not to interfere in the upcoming fight for now. The girl with red hair wearing an armor, a black-haired guy with freezing aura around him, and a guy with pink hair like Sakura-chan with fire in his fist. They are mages. Are they really going to fight that demon head-on? Naruto muttered. 
wait, the pink-haired guy, his power is somewhat familiar. It felt like Igniel's he then applied some chakra into his ear so that he can listen to the conversation of the elders and the mages in front of the giant demon. Bawad is that I didn't know anything about this a bandaged man mentioned. It seemed like he is the one responsible for the appearance of the monster. It's the devil from the Book of Zareph. A lean elder man wearing a hat said nervously. What is going on? How could a devil come out of the flute? A beautiful female young mage with blonde hair muttered, scared of the thing that appears in their very eyes. That devil is lullaby itself. It is a living magic. One of Zareph's magic. Retorted by the same old man with hat. Living magic the red-haired armored girl said as she continues to glare at the demon. Zareph. You mean the mage from ancient times? The dark-haired guy beside her is surprised from the information. Dark mage Zareph. The most atrocious mage in the history of magic world. I never imagined that his legacy from several hundred years ago would reappear right in front of us. A fat but man that looks like a gay with lipstick in his lips mentioned. The giant roared again, then looked at the mages in front of him, as if looking at crawling insects. Now, whose soul should I enjoy first? The demon said mockingly. I have decided. All of yours. The giant roared again as it prepares to attack. Let go. The red-haired armored girl commanded the black-haired guy and the pink-haired guy beside her. Without another word, the three dashes towards the demon giant to commence an attack. Requip. The red-haired girl's body then suddenly covered by light. Within seconds, her armor have changed into a little more revealing one, showing a part of her cleavage with long skirt and wings made of metal. And now she is also wielding a beautiful sword. She attacks by slicing a part of the monster's thigh gracefully. She is requipping armor. The hat-wearing elder mentioned. Ice make. Lance. The black-haired teen, now shirtless, creates multiple eye spikes and thrust into enemy's abdomen. The attack inflicts severe damage to the giant as it starts to stumble from its current posture. Higher dragon's fist. The pink-haired guy jumped high, then punches the demon using his burning fist. The demon's head flung sideways violently. That one is an ice wizard. The elders were amazed by the magic of the black-haired guy. One is using fire. It is a fire wizard. Another elder was surprised by the power of the pink-haired guy. Their movements are perfectly sync. Said by the female blonde teen that is amazed by the performance of her teammates. I. The flying blue cat agreed. The barrage of attacks from the three mages continues, inflicting massive damage to the creature. The demon then waved its hand violently in a futile attempt to counterattack. However, the mages dodges that attack easily. The demon starts to get annoyed with the attacks as he starts releasing devilish aura. The range of the aura is so great and the trees within its radius starts to decay. Listen to my beautiful song. The ground shakes and the demon starts to gather large amount of magical energy on his mouth, just like a biju Udama. It is aimed at the meeting hall and the elders. The three mages then stood in front of them as if preparing to protect the elders from the attack. The demon fires its attack towards the group, destroying everything in its path. Ice make. Shield. A giant shield of ice blocks the attack perfectly created by the black-haired ice wizard. However, the shield shatters after the attack. Then they notice that the giant demon is preparing another attack using the same magic blast from its mouth. Shit. I will not make it on time. The ice wizard mumbled. The pink-haired fire wizard and the armored girl stood in front of the ice wizard as if thinking of trying to fend off the incoming attack. However, they know that they will suffer severe damage if they do so. But they will need to do this since they love the guild masters standing behind them that acts as their parents since they were young. Natsu. Urza. Gray. The blonde girl and the flying cat shouted from the distance. The e -e -e. The demon fires its attack. The three teens braces themselves for the upcoming attack. Closing their eyes, they have accepted the incoming pain to protect the elders. However, an old small man walked towards them. I will take care of that attack. Take care of the demon after that. The three stared at the old man and then retorted. You don't need to use your magic against this kind of opponent master we will take care of him after blocking this the armored girl speak on behalf of the two guys who turned their focus back on the incoming attack. Suddenly, a voice out of nowhere can be heard. I have enough of this. Then a man landed in front of them, with his back facing them. He is wearing a red coat with black flames on the hemline and word sage hokage written in its back in kanji. The man then draws his tri-pronged kunai, stretched his hand forward, then held it horizontally, with his right hand holding the handle of the kunai, and the left hand seems like pushing the blades F-O-R-W-A-R-D Imagine Minato, blocking Kurama's Biju Udama attack in the Hokage Monument during Naruto's birth. Duration. Space-time, barrier. The kunai absorbs the attack of the demon, giving an impact that almost blows everyone behind the mysterious man away, except the man itself who is blocking and absorbing the attack. The attack disappears, then everyone heard a loud explosion somewhere in the forest. 
The mages and the elders were shocked, not by the explosion in random location of the forest, but the ability of the man in front of them to block a massive attack and redirect it somewhere where no one will get hurt. The mysterious man suddenly disappears in front of them even before they could ask any questions, leaving only traces of wind due to sudden disappearance. The man then appeared in front of the demon, imbued chakra into his muscles to enhance his strength a tsunade, and punches the demon with raw power in its jaw, sending the demon backwards with brute force, hurtling itself in a mountain. The man landed in front of them after the attack. All who are present stares at him in awe. The blonde-haired girl is the first one who manages to collect herself together and notices the man's appearance. Aside from its coat, he wears a long sleeve shirt with combination of black and orange color, and his pants are plainly colored orange. He has blonde hair, blue eyes and unique three whisker marks on both of his cheeks. What surprises her most is that the man is around the same age as if she is due to his personal appearance, and he is somewhat handsome for her eyes. The next person to collect herself is the red-haired armored girl. Without hesitation, she suddenly pointed her sword in front of the newly arrived guy, the tip of the sword almost touching his nose. The blonde guy didn't dodge and stares directly at the girl with carefree eyes and a smile. Who are you? The redhead asks the whisker-faced guy while glaring at him. Ma, before that, you said earlier that you guys will defeat that monster after his current attack right? You can get him now. The blonde eye smiled at the girl while his thumb is pointing the mountain on his back where the giant demon have landed. He deflects Lullaby's attack, knocks it down in one attack, and now he is talking to Urza so casually just like that. Just who is this guy? The blonde girl is surprised by the mysterious man's behavior. DME just who do you think you are? Suddenly barging into our fight like that. The pink-haired guy glared sharply at the new guy as well, his body is now covered with flame due to rage. The black-haired ice wizard is also glaring at him now. Naruto sweat dropped with eyebrows twitching, his behavior, just like Igniel's. Looks like I have made a wrong decision on helping them to Bayo then, the old small man with staff-wearing dwarf cap calls out the mage trio. The boy is right. Finish off lullaby before it can recover. Go brats. Ordered by the small old man. But this guy the red hair retorted. Leave things to me here Urza. If he is a threat, he could have attacked us already. I think he will not cause us any harm. The old man states with assurance. The red-haired girl, pink-haired, and the black-haired guy then nods. I'll be back to beat you down. Don't run away. The pink head shouted while pointing his right index finger into the blonde guy before the three dashed to the demon. Requip. Blackwing armor. The redhead, named Urza changes into a new form of armor with black overall color and a little more revealing than her previous one while continuously dashing towards the demon. Ice make. Saucer. The ice wizard creates a saucer-shaped ice and prepares to attack the target monster. Fire dragon's brilliant flame. The fire wizard combines two flames from both his hands, creating a large fireball-like flame, and throws it to the opponent. The three attacks landed into the demon at the same time, destroying it in the process. Everyone who saw this event watched in awe and admiration for the power the three mages have just used. The force of their attack drive the demon towards the meeting hall, and the demon falls on it, destroying the building. This is impossibly e. The demon shouts before it disappears, signaling its defeat. Zerus demon has been defeated easily. I am impressed. The guild masters and elders are now complimenting the deeds of the young mages for defeating the demon. This is this is fairy tale's strongest team. The blonde haired girl mentioned to herself. I. The flying cat just agreed with the statement. Excellent brats. The small old man mumbles to himself. The old man is standing beside Naruto watching as the events unfold. Naruto hears this and also said, yeah. They are different from other mages that I have met. They're strong. While looking at the three who are emerging from the battle scene. The old man look up at the young man beside him. Those are my children. Glad to hear that compliment for a powerful mage like you, kid. Knowing that he is not a mage but a shinobi, Naruto simply shrugs the compliment from the old man smiles with a foxy grin and starts walking away. Who are you kid? I can sense great power within you. I doubt you will just appear out of no here, help us here, and then leave like a wind. Asked by the old man seriously. Naruto turns to face the old man and stared at him in a distance. Don't worry old man. I am here just to help you guys. I don't have any other intentions. I happen to pass by this place and sense that demon. You're just a passerby. Where are you planning to go then young man? I am on my way to a town called Magnolia, old man. What do you plan to do in Magnolia boy? The old man suddenly asks in curiosity. Naruto scratches the back of his head and I smiled with a little blush. Actually, I have been planning to join a guild named Fairy Tail Tabeo. The old man's eyes grew wide. He have seen a little of this boy's abilities and already knew that this boy is a powerful person. 
He cannot imagine someone with this caliber will be joining his guild without any reason whatsoever. The old man then concluded that this kid might need some help regarding something and thinks that his guild can provide appropriate solution on his needs. He also cannot sense any lies or malicious intent with the boy's words. So he decided to tell him that he is the master of fairy tale guild. As the small old man is about to respond to the boy's words, a sudden mild wind blows, and then the whiskered boy says, see ya Gigi. And then disappears in a swirl of leaves. The old man is surprised about another unique ability of the guy, since he can no longer sense him after the very moment the blonde left. The armored redhead saw the disappearing act of the blonde guy and went straight to the old man, followed by the ice wizard and the fire wizard. Master where is that guy? He just disappeared. I don't know. Maybe it is also one of his abilities. But don't worry Urza. I cannot sense any ill intent within him. However, I can sense that he is suppressing huge amount of power. I have also sensed it master. That's why I became wary of him at first. But if master says he is not a threat, then I will believe it. So he ran away now Jai Chan. He surely is a coward. Butting in our own fight just like that then running away. The pink haired guy retorted. Aho. As if he will be running away from you. Did you see that brute strength he just used while punching lullaby? If you got hit by that, I bet your head will got separated immediately from your body. The ice mage said countering the other guy's words. Not only that gray. I didn't feel any magic when he leapt from the location where he was currently standing before attacking Lullaby directly, meaning his movement speed is on par with my with my flight armor at the very least. The power of his punch also rivals my strength while using the giant armor. To think that he can passively do that without any magic enhancement is terrifying. And have you also seen how he blocked the attack and redirects it in a random location towards the forest, did you? Blocking a powerful attack like that is not just an ordinary ability. Urza looks at the ice wizard while talking. What? The fire mage is surprised from what Urza have stated. Does that mean that that cat-faced guy is on the same level as of you Urza? That's my rough guess Natsu. If he really is hiding more power based on what I and master have sensed, he maybe is stronger than me. Urza concluded as a matter of fact. That guy is stronger than Urza. The blonde girl shouts raising her hand in surprise in a comedic fashion. It is rare to see Urza acknowledge as someone being more powerful than herself, so that may be true Lucy. The talking cat named Happy responded. Woo. I want to fight him right now. Natsu shouted impatiently. You cannot fight a civilian Natsu. That is against our guild's rules. The small old man responded to Natsu. He is a civilian. No way even a mage usually don't have such brute strength master Makarov. Gray questioned the guild master. How did you know that he is a civilian master? Lucy asks the old man. He said something to me that verified himself being a civilian. What did he say master? Urza asks interestingly. Makarov smiled. He is on the way to Magnolia to join Fairy Tail. Before I could respond, he has already disappeared. What? Natsu, Grey, Urza, Lucy and Happy's jaw dropped. Then, the other guild masters interrupted the chatter of the mages and their master. Great job Makarov. Looks like we owe Fairy Tail this time. Nyahahaha. Makarov just let a prideful laugh until he noticed something out of place, and then, his facial expression suddenly went pale. The other guild masters, along with the mages of Fairy Tail, also followed the gaze of Master Makarov. Why? The regular meeting hall has been destroyed. The guild masters shouts in unison except Makarov. We went overboard again. Wahahaha. Natsu just laugh it off. Chapter 2 Fairy Tail. Naruto decides to take a rest and decides to continue his travel towards the city of Magnolia the next day, since it is almost midnight already. However, unlike the usual sleeping method of lying on the ground while cuddling into a sleeping bag, Naruto has been sleeping in a way more different method than what he have normally used to ever since he have arrived at Earthland. His sleeping position is taking a meditative sitting position while his eyes are closed. This way, he can sleep in harmony with nature, still gathering Sinjutsu Chakra and stocking it into his body so he get used to it to activate his Sage Mode Level 2 whenever he needs to. He still continues to combine his own chakra and Senjutsu chakra inside his own chakra system. Also, in this way, he can detect danger and act accordingly if he needs to, since his senses are far more active while accessing Senjutsu chakra than his normal senses, even while he is sleeping. In his mindscape while sleeping, he is continuously training on using his elemental affinities, Kekai Genkai abilities, Ninjutsu, Tujutsu, Kinjutsu, Fuinjutsu and Dejutsu techniques, Chakra control including Bijuus and Juubi's Chakra control, Senjutsu Chakra manipulation and control, his clan techniques. And now maximizing the power of his Dragon Lacrima and Dragon Force, using the Cage Bunshin training style. The next morning, he continues on hoping on trees towards the same direction. 
He noticed that the forests in this world has smaller trees than in his world however, this world has much better Sinjutsu Chakra, since people here are using magic, not chakra. In their daily lives so the Sinjutsu Chakra is not polluted, then he notices a group of people below the trees, so he stop hopping and see what are they about. Below the tree, there were group of men holding dangerous objects. One has a sword, a knife, and all sorts of basic weapons. They were jithering in semi-circle formation, and in front of them is a girl. The girl has violet hair with a red-colored ribbon pinned at the back of her head as her hair accessory. She is wearing a long-sleeved dress colored sky blue with few stripes of blue, and her dress has a collar with red ribbon in the neckline. To top it all, she is wearing an oblique shaft eyeglasses. Look what we got here everyone, this missy is hot isn't it? One of the men in the group said with a smile of a maniac. Don't come near me. I am a mage. I will never hold back to defeat you if you come any closer. The girl retorted. Ha. Hey, we can handle your magic. You cannot attack all of us. Once we got you, it is all over. You will experience every pleasure in the world little missy. Jayahaha one among the group of men spoke, and the other men laughs around as if they have caught a delicious prey. Seeing that the statement is true, the violet-haired girl's eyes starts to form droplets of tears. She starts to shiver, and fear starts to cover her reasoning. What can she do? As the group of men starts inching into her closer while her back has already hit a tree where she don't have any more place to run into, she shouted with all her might. Someone please help me e. Clenching his fist after seeing enough, Naruto throws several smoke bomb, then jumps below the ground towards the girl. What's happening? Who did this? One of the bandits shouted. So in every world, there were really perverted useless guys like you. Naruto muttered through the smoke, then attacks each bandit with swift movements and hitting their vital points, making them fall into the ground one by one. As much as he would like to kill them like in his world, he don't want to have his hands again filled with blood like in his world. He don't want to kill anymore. So knocking them unconscious is the best method that he can do for now. The girl, even though she is still shivering, wonders what is happening inside the smoke. The she hears a small cries of pains and loud sound of bodies falling on the ground. Her fear starts to well up once more. She thought that the sound that she have heard are sounds of people dying one by one. Someone is saving her, but she don't want to have her savior killing other people, even if it means of saving her from these bandits. She wants to run away, thinking that she might also get killed. But her legs are frozen from fear. She cannot move at all. After a few seconds, the smoke has been cleared. Then, she found several bodies lying unconscious on the ground. Those are her attackers earlier. She wants to shout after seeing dead bodies, then she noticed that there were no signs of blood in the ground, and most of the bandits are breathing heavily while unconscious. Her fear starts to disappear. It was then that she have noticed a young man standing in the middle of unconscious bodies, with his back facing her. The young man is wearing a red coat with sage hockage inscription in the back with black flames on the hemline, shining blonde hair, cerulean blue eyes and three whisker marks in his cheeks. The guy then stares at then turns around walking towards her. Are you alright miss? Naruto asked in a worried tone. The girl is surprised by the appearance of the boy, since he is now about a meter in front of her. He is very handsome from her point of view, making her face feel a little hot. Then she try to hid what she were thinking and glares at the him. Why did you save me? Are you one of them? The girl talked nervously. Mama I am not one of them. I just knocked them out so they can't touch you. These guys don't even deserve to touch you. Naruto smiled in his usual foxy grin with his right hand scratching his head from behind. I don't need you to trust me. I just want to save you. Maybe we should get away from here before these guys woke up. Hearing these words, the girl then relaxed. The boy has a goofy smile, yet she sensed warmth and kindness in them. She nodded and both of them starts walking away from the bandit side by side. Thank you mister. I don't know what might happen if you didn't came to help me. The girl bows thankfully to the boy. You don't have to do that. I just did what I know is right. Naruto waves both his hand in front of the girl violently. And also, don't call me mister, it makes me feel all Tabeo. He said in a hurtful gesture in front of the girl. What is Tabeo? A verbal tick. The girl giggles with the boy's antics. I am sorry. I didn't know your name. Since you saved me, I will introduce myself properly. With a small coughing sound, the girl stood straight and looks up in his eyes. I am Laki Olieta, and I am a wizard. Introducing herself with a huge smile on her face. I guess it will not hurt to tell her my name. Only Igneela knows my name here in Earthland after all Naruto thought. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, the toad sage of Mount Mayabakizan and Rakudame Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. Please to meet you Laki-chan. Chan? Why he is acting like we are close or something. Maybe she is just trying to calm me down because of the incident earlier she thought. Mount Mayabakizan. Hidden Leaf Village. Where is that? I haven't heard of it. Laki looked at Naruto who is still walking beside her. 
it is very far away from here. It would be best not to go there since you will get lost on the way. Naruto shrugged it off to dismiss the topic. Laki understands the indication and decides not to dig in deeper. I am lucky you are around during that time, Naruto. I really don't know how should I thank you. No worries. I am also glad myself that I happened to pass that time so I can protect you. And besides, this is the fastest route to my destination and I just happened to pass by and protect you. He is gentle and kind. So there were guys who are still like him Laki thought. By the way, since you mentioned that you were just passing by, where are you going Naruto? Only a few people who knows about this route so I am just wandering. Actually, I am on my way to the city called Magnolia. That's great. I am also on my way to Magnolia. That's the city where I currently live. Naruto frowns. Okay. You said that you were a wizard right? Why are you walking alone in this dangerous route? You can just use a route where more people have been passing through right? Actually, I am on a job. It is my first job in my guild and when I finish it quite earlier than I expected, I feel overjoyed. I want master and the others to know how well did my job went through as soon as possible. So I decided to take on the fastest route possible to make it to Magnolia. I didn't expect such thing will happen. Laki gives a distant look. Naruto smiles at her. She just wanted to be acknowledged by her new guild. I see. You shouldn't do something like that. You have done your job properly and your guild master will definitely acknowledge your achievement. There is no need to rush things. You should prioritize your own safety first Laki-chan. Naruto reaches out his hand and starts petting Laki's head. This guy, he is treating me like a child. Using Chan in my name, now petting me like this. Laki then removes Naruto's hand in her head gently, then stood in front of him, pouting. You don't have to treat me like a child Naruto. I already am 15 years old. I bet we are just around the same age. Yes, you're right. I am just 17 years old to Bayo. Naruto smiles, then, I apologize for that. I just don't want to see someone like you walking alone in a dangerous place. You keep on talking that this is a dangerous place. But why are you also taking this route alone? Aren't you afraid Naruto? If I tell her that I am helping on trees, it will only lead more to questions Naruto thought. You have seen it right. I can protect myself. So I can walk on this route anytime. Even if Naruto wants to leave her to continue on faster traveling time by hopping on trees, she don't want to leave Laki again in this route. That's why, Laki-chan, since we have the same destination, let me escort you until we reach Magnolia so I can protect you. No more buts. Laki smiled seeing Naruto's natural kindness. Yes. I will appreciate that. Thank you Naruto. The two continue to walk, share their lunch, proceed on walking again until darkness covers the entire sky. It is now night time. Even though Naruto is talking with Laki almost the entire time that they were traveling, he have evaded topics regarding his personal and past experiences. Laki also realized this and believes that Naruto don't want to talk about his past. The two have camped beneath a tree with a little bonfire to cook their food and they enjoy eating their food silently. After an hour, the two decided to take a rest. Naruto insisted to be the guard so that Laki can sleep. The girl fell asleep in a couple of minutes. After setting few traps, Naruto decides to sleep by using his meditative sitting position to still continue his nighttime routine of passively absorbing Sinjutsu chakra in his own chakra system. Laki is the first among the two to wake up in the morning. After rubbing her eyes, she saw something that immediately shots her eyes wide awake. Naruto is still sleeping in his meditative position, now with couple of birds chirping and jumping around his head, shoulders and legs. Laki felt that Naruto's presence is that one of the nature and simply watching him felt very calming and makes her smile. During the whole time that they were together yesterday, even if Naruto is not opening so much about his past, he have concluded that Naruto is a very caring and protective person. He matches her walking speed even if he had longer legs, he always asks for Laki's preference first before making a decision, tends to make sure the area is safe if it is suspicious, and also, very calm and collected, not wasting any movement. This is the first time that she have been with a guy for such a long time, so she is not even sure if other guys will behave like that. There were guys in her guild however, all of them are quite crazy. So it is new to her to have an encounter with such a guy and she felt that she is growing fond of him due to his protective nature. Naruto slowly opens his eyes because the bird starts pecking his face, as if asking him to wake up. Naruto smiles at the birds before they flew away. Naruto then give a warm smile to the girl that is looking at him. Good morning. I hope you have a nice nap Laki-chan. Laki blushes, then hides her face with her hair to avoid Naruto's gaze. Goo good morning Naruto-kun. She have included kun into Naruto's name before she realize. Shall we start walking then? Only a few kilometers before we reach Magnolia so I think we can make it there before noon. Yes. Let's go Naruto. 
Laki also give her partner a warm smile as the two starts walking towards the city of Magnolia. Scene change. The large crowd were gathered in a circle watching a certain fight between two familiar wizard. This fight is between the fire wizard of fairy tale, Natsu Dragneel, and an armored redhead girl named Urza Scarlet. The fight is so fierce, yet there were no hostility between the two. It is just like pitting their magic and fighting abilities against each other to see how does each of them improved after the past years. The fight is going on really well as the audiences, mostly the guild members of Fairy Tale, were betting for which among the two will win, event though most bets were on Urza's side until a human-shaped lizard interfered in the fight. That's enough. Everyone, stay where you currently standing. I am a messenger from the Magic Council. The lizard stated with a clap from his hand. The Council. A petite blue-haired girl named Levi questioned. Eh? Way did they send one? Voiced by two of her teammates, namely Jed and Droy respectively. They are ignoring the appearance of the messenger aren't they? Lucy is surprised from the trio's response in the situation. The messenger from the Magic Council continued, stemming from the recent Eisenwald incident, we hereby charge you with 11 counts of criminal property damage. Urza Scarlet, you are under arrest. WHATTT Natsu roared as the event unfolds. Scene change. We are here Naruto. Welcome to the city of Magnolia. Laki exclaimed happily to the blonde guy that is accompanying her. Wow, this city is a lot bigger than the other towns I have recently visited. Naruto slowly gazes upon the place while slowly looking around. The streets were quite busy with tall buildings and beautiful houses established as if showing the city's superiority among the others. Alright then. We'll be going on separate ways now Laki-chan. I still need to do something after arriving in Magnolia. Naruto smiled with his usual foxy grin. I see. Laki responded with a sad smile. May I ask what will you be doing now that we have arrived in Magnolia? Since Naruto is new to the city, he will need to do some intel gathering like he what he has normally used to in every town that he has been through ever since he have arrived in Earthland for one whole day. This way, he can respond properly if the situation calls for it. I will need to do some sightseeing myself Laki-chan. I am new to this city so I need to see the beauty of the city. Let me accompany you then. You have protected me back then and I will feel bad leaving you here like a stranger. Let me be your tour guide Naruto. Laki suggests as both of her hand were clutching a fist right in front of her chest while leaning forward to the blonde. Ma, you don't need to do that. You need to report your recent job and your guildmaster right. I can handle this. See you Laki-chan. Before Laki could react, Naruto hops into one of the building's rooftop, turn around and face her, then wave another goodbye, then jumps into another rooftop until he can no longer be seen. Laki is dumbfitted by the leaping ability of the blonde. She didn't feel any magic used when he leaped, so she was surprised by how powerful the guy's legs were. She then gives herself a large sigh with her shoulders slump. Showing out of nowhere then leaving just like that. Baka. And then, she proceeded to walk towards her guild, fairy tale. Scene change. So that is the building of the fairy tale guild Naruto exclaimed while on top of the highest skyscraper on the city of Magnolia and looking at a specific building with a flag that has a symbol that is somewhat like a silhouette of a fairy in the night ski. As much as he would like to come barging into the guild and offer himself to join the guild, he didn't know anyone among the guild and he don't know how he will be treated, so he gathered intel first about some of the members from the town. Event though he don't know what does the wizards looks like, he have gathered basic information regarding them. One of the famous wizards in fairy tale is Urza Scarlet, known as the Titania. She is the most powerful female wizard of fairy tale among the rumors. Another one is the fire dragon slayer, Natsu Dragneel, who is said raised by a dragon. This reminds him of Igneel's son. Another is an ice wizard using make magic, technically an ice make wizard, named Grey Fullbuster. What surprises him about the latter is that people regards him to have tendency to strip down his clothes anywhere subconsciously. Also, this includes fairy tale guild master, Makarov Dreyer, who has a reputation as one of the great ten wizard saints. Other town people have mentioned guys to be the most powerful fairy tale guild, such as Laxus Dreyer, whom is also Makarov's grandson, Mystigan, a mysterious hooded mage that conceals his identity, and Gildertz, being the most powerful mage of fairy tale next to Makarov. Looks like this guild really lives to its hype. Naruto muttered. Naruto then leaps down to the town, looks for some Raymond, then decides to call it a day, since it will be weird to come barging in the guild in the middle of the night. Scene change. Ah, the sweet smell of freedom. Natsu shouts while running on the guild hall. Freedom is the best. Who could have thought that freedom is so great? As he continue on running like a broken machine with fire breathing out of his mouth. Shut it, would you? Jed exclaimed to Natsu. This is what makes him lovable. A beautiful silver-haired girl that tends to be the barmaid of fairy tale, named Marahin, spoke smiling kindly due to the fire dragon slayer's antics. 
So Urza's arrest is just for show Lucy saw while his head is lying in the table. To think that I am so worried. I see. She's a scapegoat, not a sacrificale lamb. Gray attempts to cheer up Lucy. That joke gave me chills, Ice Wizard. A man with muscular build with spiky white hair named Elfman retorted on the Ice Wizard. Locky the old man, Master Makarov, who is sitting in the bar table near Marahin, called the Maganeko with violet hair, who have just arrived yesterday after finishing her first job as a member of Fairy Tale. Hi, Master Locky nods as she walks towards the small guild master. Um, is what Marahin said has been true? Are you really okay? The guild master asked in a worried tone. Urza also joins the talk while Marahin also listens to the conversation. After arriving in the fairy tale guild and reporting the result of her current mission through Marahin, Locky also told the barmaid about what happened on the way back to the guild in as much detail as she could. She told the silver-haired beauty about the bandits and the mysterious guy named Naruto, helping and escorting her back to the city of Magnolia. The guild master continues to nod as she tell the story while Urza and Marahin is listening intently. Looks like we will need to report the increase of bandits in that route to the Magic Council so they can take appropriate action. Makarov just concluded while nodding. Good thing nothing bad happens to you. We owe it to that mysterious knight of yours. The old man then winks to Locky as a sudden heat rose on her cheeks. From what you have said, I think this Naruto guy is very dependable. I would like to meet him since there were very few guys who were like that. Marahin stated smiling while looking at the other guys of the guild. Natsu and Grayy naked are arguing once again while Elfman shouting about being a man, did you tell him to visit our guild after his sightseeing in the city? I want to, but before I could tell him, he just jumped away from me right after arriving to the city. Locky said with slight annoyance from her face. But that guy sure is strong. Being able to take a number of bandits without using magic in a minimum time is something. I want to fight him. Urza said while holding her chin with her right hand. Then, Elfman shouted out of no here. So, what about your man-to-man -man battle with Urza, Natsu? Oh yeah, I forgot. Natsu then cheerfully shouted on the armored girl. Urza, let's continue where we left off. No. I am tired. Urza shrugged the suggestion uninterestedly. Here I come. Ignoring Urza's words, Natsu dashed forward towards Urza with his fist burning from his flame. What am I to do to you? Urza closes her eyes then, dodges Natsu's burning fist, then gives him a punch in on his stomach. After a second, the dragon slayer is now out cold on the ground, much to the surprise of Lucy, Elfman and Grey. Shall we begin then? Urza told Natsu as she looked at the pink head lying on the ground. It's over. Happy shouted with laughs from Elfman, and Grey echoed inside the guild. Urza's strong. That's for sure. Elfman exclaimed. Suddenly, Master Makarov's face became a little serious, as if sensing a strong presence standing behind the main door of the fairy tale guild entrance. Urza also looks at the door after sensing the presence. So he has finally arrived. Makarov muttered. Do you mean him, Master? Urza looked at the old man with a serious expression. Hearing this, everyone in the guild, including Natsu, who is currently standing up from Urza's attack, stared intently at the fairy tale's main door. The door starts to open slowly while everyone is waiting in anticipation. Then, a figure wearing a coat starts walking from the door. That's him. Gray stands from his seat with his eyes starts to narrow towards the guy who have just arrived. Don't be so tense everyone. I'll entertain our guest. Makarov said, jumping from the bar table and walked towards the newly arrived person. Wow. All of you have sensed my arrival. That's great to Bayo. The person said cheerfully. The guild master and the guest meets up in the middle of the walkway. Master Makarov smiled at guest. Naruto then looked intently at the small old man in front of him. Well, the other guild members starts to relax upon hearing the cheerful greeting from the guest. However, the girls from the guild appear to be interested in this handsome newcomer. We met again old man. I can't believe you are from Fairy Tale Guild. Naruto said. Um, actually, I am this guild's master, Makarov Dreyer, Fairy Tale Guild Master. Pleased to meet you. Eh? Why did you not tell me when we met last time old man? Makarov twitched from the old man address. Before I could tell you, you just suddenly disappear. Naruto remembering the event, rubs the back of his head with his right hand and smiled in a foxy grin. Yeah, yeah. That's my bad. Naruto. Locky them unconsciously muttered that caught the blonde's attention. Locky chan You are also a member of Fairy Tail. Why didn't you also tell me? Naruto complained at the Maganeko. You are not asking anything about me so I didn't tell you. I thought you were not interested. Locky walks towards him, stood with a little distance, then crossed her arm in front of her chest. The other members of the guild were surprised that Locky is acquainted with a mysterious man in front of them, even the latter calling the girl with Chan as if they were so close. Huh? So much for intel gathering. 
Hiro Senen is definitely laughing his ass right now if he is watching me Naruto thought, then slumps his shoulder. So you kids knew each other? Makarov questioned both of them. Actually, he is the one who have escorted me back here in Magnolia, master. Locky said, fidgeting. Makarov is then surprised about the coincidence, along with Urza. Looks like we owe you another one aside from assisting us in defeating Lullaby, Naruto-san. Urza said with a smile. The other members of the guild are shocked upon hearing that, aside from Natsu and Grey. The guild members have already known that an S-class level mage assisted the trio in defeating the demon lullaby, based on Natsu and Grey's stories. But to see that guy in front of them with such power is humbly smiling at them didn't quite match the impression on their heads. Ah, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Naruto slightly bowed. I think it is time for a little introduction, young man. Makarov said. All right. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, Toad Sage of Mount Mayabakizan and Rakudame Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. Pleased to meet you all, fairy tale mages. Naruto exclaimed happily. The guild members smiled at him, others waved, and females felt embraced for him due to unknown places that the blonde mentioned. Are you still interested to join our guild, Naruto? Makarov said kindly at the guy. Well. That's the reason why I am here in the first place Makarov Jiji. Do you have any requirement before I could join? Actually, I will need to hear your reason first why do you want to join Fairy Tail. But upon hearing what you have done to protect one of my children and also assisting us in the Eisenwald incident, I could definitely make you a member of our guild even right now as a sign of our gratitude. Makarov smiling at the blonde. I guess I will need to tell you my reason then. Naruto became serious in the thought. I don't want to join the guild because of trivial matters. I think you have the right to know Makarov Jiji. Maybe you can also help me. Makarov stares eye to eye with Naruto. He then see the eyes of a hardened warrior, a soldier who have already faced and experienced every worst possible scenario, one who have fought the very evil himself, one who have suffered so much in his entire life. These eyes should not be in a boy with this age. He is almost the same age as of Natsu, Urza and the others, yet Makarov's thought is then interrupted by a shout. Naruto. Fight me. The fire dragon slayer shouted. Hey hey, if he really is an S-class, he is as powerful as Urza. Urza just beat you earlier right? Elfman shouted. I would also like to fight Naruto. Gray said as well pointing his fist at the blonde. Natsu, leave him to me. What? I want to fight him first. We were just defeated by Urza. And besides, I want to see if he really is an S-class level. Before the two's argument goes out of hand, Urza interrupted the two. Stop it you two. Don't act like kids in front of a potential new member. The two stops arguing. Way to go Urza. Locky said as she is worried since even if Naruto is strong, she believes that Grey and Natsu are a little overboard for him. Since Naruto is about an S-class level, it will be best if I will be the one to fight him. Urza said casually, shifting her gaze into Naruto. Everyone falls into the ground upon hearing Urza's declaration. Urza. Don't scare Naruto. He is just a potential new member. Lucy shouted. As if he is scared. Look at him. Grey said. Everyone in the guild follow Lucy's gaze, and Naruto is just staring at them smiling. If one of the requirements in entering the guild is a spar, then I am happy to spar with anyone among you guys. Saying something like that in front of Urza is like asking to bury it alive. Levy said while rubbing her forehead. Very well, let's head towards the backyard. I also want to see your magic and fighting style before you became a member of the guild, Naruto. Makarov said to the whiskered guy beside him. I am actually not a mage, so I don't have ability to use magic. Maybe I will explain it to Makarov Jiji after this Naruto thought. Alright. Let's get this show on the road. The guild members walks towards the backyard of the guild. It is pretty big and always used when wizards needs to train or spar with each other. Naruto stands in a distance while Natsu, Grey and Urza are still arguing who among them will fight Naruto. Naruto-san, I think you should be the one to pick which among the three of them do you wish to fight with. This will go forever if we don't stop those three. The barmaid, Marahin suggested. Naruto still cannot get over with the amount of beautiful female members in the guild. They also have a feminine feel, unlike some other women in his own world. As he looks at the arguing trio, Naruto muttered something that shocks everyone. If you three cannot decide, then, you guys can fight me at the same time Dadabeo. Naruto smiled at the trio. What? Challenging fairy tale's strongest team just like that. Lucy exclaimed. Boy, are you sure about that? Grace said. Are you taking us lightly? Natsu glared at him. Don't worry. I have a general overview about your abilities during your fight against the demon. And also, this is only a spar so it will be just alright. Naruto stated calmly. I see. Urza glared. You seem to be a bit full of yourself. Very well. Natsu, Grey, let's do this together. Master Locky looked at Makarov with worried eyes. 
this is really more than overboard. Makarov looked at the blonde. He didn't see any hesitation and remains calm and collected, as if analyzing the opponents in front of him. Don't worry. I will interfere myself if this don't go well, and besides, you can see in Naruto's eyes that he is prepared for this. Makarov said to Laki while not removing his gaze on the Hokage. Upon hearing this, the guild chatters became silent. Fighting three of the strongest wizards of fairy tale will not be an easy task. All of the members stare at the mysterious newcomer, wondering what kind of ability or magic does he have to be able to stare eye to eye into the three wizards who are now preparing to attack him. As the wind blows, leaves swirling from the ground, the members now stare blankly into the three wizards and the newcomer. Let's begin. Makarov shouted. Naruto Fairy Tale Fanfic Chapter 3 Welcome Party. Let's begin. Fairy Tale's guild master, Makarov said with anticipation. After hearing those words, Natsu's body is enveloped with flames while Grey removes his clothes. Urza on the other hand draws a magic sword out of thin air. This mage trio is said to be the most powerful team in fairy tale. This is the team who has just defeated an entire guild of Eisenwald and also defeated Lullaby, one of Zara's demons. After that incident from Eisenwald, this team is now is now even considered as one of the most powerful group of mage in Fiori. On the other side, there stood the familiar blue-eyed shinobi with blonde hair and whisker marks on his cheeks, Yuzumaki Naruto. Staring at his three opponents calmly, this will be his first official fight after his training with the Rakuto Senen for seven years in a dimensional rift. Even though time doesn't flow in a dimensional rift and his body technically doesn't age, his mind has matured a lot when it comes to serious situations. However, since he is in a foreign world, he believes that he needs to minimize the use of his abilities and powers. All that he needs to do is to prove himself in front of his new comrades so that they can assist him, if possible, on his goal to return to his own world. Surrounding them are the members of the most powerful guild in the country of Fiori, Fairy Tale. The fight that they thought to be a welcoming party for the newcomer is now filled with heavy atmosphere. Most of them cannot believe that Yuzumaki Naruto is challenging the guild's most powerful team. Among the crowd, the most nervous among them is Laki Olieta. She doesn't want her new friend to fight and got beaten by these powerful mages. I'm all fired up. Natsu then prepares to attack, but Urza stops him. Don't attack recklessly Natsu, same for you Grey. You know how powerful his base strength is when he attacked Lullaby. If you got caught with one of those punches, you will automatically be knocked out. Urza explains to the other two mages. Looks like you are taking this one seriously. Grey smirked but not removing his gaze to the blonde in front of them. Alright. So all we need to do is to dodge his punches. Natsu said while glaring at Naruto. It is not that easy. His base speed also surpasses our own speed, so he can easily hit us if he wants to. The armored girl said while his eyes narrowed. That's why we will need a formation. Formation Grey and Natsu exclaimed at the same time. Yes. First, Natsu, you will be the main close range attacker. You can take a hit from him since you are durable enough to withstand his attacker so I think. Then Grey, you will be the long range attacker. Take advantage of every possible opening that Natsu and I can provide while we are fighting him. Then, what's your role Urza? Grey questioned. I'll be a mix close and long range attacker. I will attack along with Natsu in close range to protect Natsu and also provide a better chance of opening that you can take advantage of. And if in case that both of you and Natsu cannot find an opening, I will be the one who will create that opening. Urza explained the plan. Let's do this. Natsu, along with Urza and Grey, then prepares to launch the attack. The rest of the guild, including Naruto, heard the conversation between the trio. Naruto didn't react, as if he already knows what to do during the attack. However, the guild members start to sweat drop. This is one of the few times that I saw Urza this serious, master. Marahin said to the old man. Is Naruto-san really that strong? I believe so. I have the same point of view as of Urza ever since we met him in Eisenwald. And probably those two brats beside her think so too. Master Makarov narrows his eyes into Naruto's direction. And this way, we will definitely see what kind of magic that young man has. Come on, even if you are a man, there is no way that you can fight those three. Elfman exclaimed. I think so too. Levy agreed to the bulky tall man. Urza have already prepared a plan to finish this fight as soon as possible. No matter how I calculate it, there is no way anyone can win from those three if they have such plan. That's right. But Levy Chan, we cannot calculate the result of this fight yet if we don't know Naruto san's true abilities. I have seen with my own eyes of what can he possibly do, so I think Urza has a reason to be this cautious. Lucy said to the petite woman. That guy is that powerful that even Urza needs to get serious to take him head on. Macau tilts his head, as if not believing Lucy's statement. Aye. Lucy is right. The blue flying cat agreed. I am worried about Natsu. Naruto Laki said while clasping both of her hand in front of her chest. 
Hey guys, I can hear you Naruto thought after hearing everything the mutterings of these guild members. It is not like he didn't care, but he is just used on being underestimated. He just stood there and then prepares a combat stance that Rock Lee and Guy usually used, preparing for a Tejutsu fight. Don't be so serious like that. This is just a spar to Bayo. After hearing those words, Natsu and Urza dash towards Naruto to initiate the battle. Higher Dragon's Fist. Equip. The Knight. Naruto will definitely dodge Natsu's attack, either by jumping or twisting sideways. By then, I will immediately follow up an attack. It will be hard to dodge two simultaneous attacks with a combination of speed and power, unless you use any form of magic. In case he can also dodge my attack, Gray will follow up immediately and will surely hit him, even if he has such base speed, Urza calculated Naruto's moves within her mind. It is true, Naruto dodges Natsu's fire dragon's fist. However, he just steps sideways to dodge. In such, Urza rapidly swings one of her swords, followed by another, from both of her hands, in an effort to either hit Naruto with one of them, or make him dodge so Grey can target him. However, in that very moment, Naruto already has Horatian Kunase on both of his hands, parrying the attacks from Urza's swords. In that instance, Urza's initial plan is negated, since Grey cannot follow an attack due to Naruto parrying her attacks, not dodging it. If Grey attacks, she will also get caught by it. Gray's eyebrow twitches after realizing that Naruto has been able to see through their plans. However, this battle is in Urza's favor. Urza is a swordsman, and she is already used on fighting using multiple kinds of weapons. Due to this, she also knows every possible weakness of a weapon that her opponent might use against her. This Naruto in front of her is just using ordinary short knives to parry her magical swords. So she will just need to speed up her attack and take advantage of her sword's range advantage than the short knives that Naruto is wielding. She then just remembered that this is the very same weapon that Naruto have used to block Lullaby's attack. This makes her wary of the shinobi's weapons. Their weapon clash continues. Natsu and Grey are on standby, waiting for any possible openings that Urza might provide in any given moment so they can attack Naruto immediately. If they enter the weapon clash without thinking, they will be either got caught on these two warriors' fast attacks or hurt possibly Urza if they attack recklessly. However, the two are amazed on how Naruto can stand face to face with Urza's sword mastery by just using his short knives. The guild is silenced to see a person that can match Urza's caliber in sword fighting. Makarov watches intently and still in awe how Naruto can fight Urza without using any magic on a fight of this level. Naruto dodges, parries, and attacks. Same goes for Urza. However, little does the armored girl know, Naruto's sword style is based on using Uzumaki clan's kenjutsu techniques, and he is using his father's signature weapons, the Horatian Kunase. In this very moment, he realizes that his parents have left him something that can protect him and aid him in battle. But such emotions must not linger in the battlefield. He still hasn't used the kunai's true ability and also the powerful techniques of Uzumaki's sword style. He doesn't want to hurt his new comrades, so he believes that this is not the right time to use those as of the moment. The two magical swords and two kunais clashes at the same time. Naruto smirks into Urza and Urza also smiles in front of Naruto. Urza is actually enjoying this weapon clash. To have someone on the guild that she can train to or spar to is not a bad thing to hone her own skills. However, much to her annoyance, she still cannot sense Naruto's magic. Or rather, he still is not using any magic and they were fighting the whole time with only his base abilities. Are you taking us lightly? Urza said with a frown while dodging a slash aimed on her neck. Not really. Why did you say so Urza-chan? Naruto asks while twisting his body sideways after a vertical overhead slice from the female swordsman. Twitching her eyebrows at the new suffix included in her name, she roared at her opponent, why are you not using any magic in our fight? Everyone who hears that was stunned, except Makarov who have already noticed that. Fighting the strongest team in fairy tale without using any magic is insane. But here is a guy who can handle them without breaking much sweat. Just how powerful is he? But the clash, Urza jumps away to give distance so Natsu and Grey can attack while she prepares to attack for an opening. Don't joke around us. Fire Dragon's wing attack. Naruto dodges the attack by leaping out of harm's way, however, Grey takes advantage of the currently airborne shinobi's position and attacks him in midair. Try to dodge this. Ice make. Lance. Grey creates multiple spear-shaped ice with her ice magic and launches it towards the newcomer. Since shinobis are used on balancing themselves and fighting while airborne, Naruto simply used the Horatian kunais from both of his hands to parry over the multiple ice lances that aims to impale him. Taking advantage of the situation while the blonde shinobi is occupied in parrying Grey's attacks, Urza uses one of her armor's abilities. Dance my blades. Circle sword. As a number of swords dashes towards Naruto, who is still in midair. Naruto withdraws his Horatian kunais and draws out four shurikens, two in each hand. 
then he throws it sharply towards the incoming swords. What can those four little blades can do in front of that many magical swords? Natsu chuckled at Naruto's move. There were 24 swords Naruto muttered in that case he forms hand seals so fast that everyone watching the fight including Natsu, Urza and Grey are amazed. Shuriken Cage Bunshin. In that instant, the four shurikens became around a hundred, and exactly twenty-four among the shurikens accurately clashes with the twenty-four attacking swords, while the remaining shurikens are directed towards Urza. With his training with the Rakuto Senen, Naruto has mastered shuriken jutsu that could rival Itachi's prowess, so hitting multiple targets is now just as easy as breathing for him. The redhead is surprised by the sudden increase of number of the blades. So that's his magic sure though, Urza's reflexes are very high, and she can definitely dodge those incoming attacks, as long as she have an idea how many attacks she needs to parry or dodge. However, the thought of sudden increase in number of the blades rushing in front of her overwhelmed her. They didn't only deflect all of her swords, but also reverses the situation easily. And due to the sudden increase of the number of shurikens, she didn't have enough time to think how to dodge such fast and sharp blades. Bray then quickly dashes in front of Urza with all his might. And then he casts a spell to protect both of them. Ice make. Shield. The shield deflects the shurikens, however, some shurikens were able to pierce the shield, shattering some of its part and inflicting several slices in Grey's skin and pants. In that instance, Natsu stood in front of Grey and uses one of his most powerful attacks. Fire Dragon's Roar. The massive fire attack is directed towards Naruto, who is still in midair, albeit now descending to the ground. Naruto covers his head with his arms before the fire attack hits him. But it seems futile as his body is quickly engulfed with thick flames due to the attack. I did it. Natsu roars. Grey and Urza looks into Naruto's burning figure with worry painted in their face. Some of the guild members cheered, and others also looked worried about the fate of the newcomer. However, a voice from the familiar blonde guy surprised them. It is not over yet. Why are you guys acting like that to Bayo? Naruto is standing right behind the burning figure. The burning figure puffs, and it became a tree log. Everyone's eyes went saucer wide. That fire attack, along with his other recent fire attacks, they really have the same feel as that of Igneal's flame. Could it be that Natsu really is the son of Igneal? Naruto just thought. How is that possible? I know I hit you pretty hard. Natsu roared at the blonde comically. Naruto simply smiles. I have substituted myself with a log right before your attack hits. I have created an illusion using my chakra, so the log appeared to have the same image as of me. Naruto explained casually. It is called Kawarimi no Jutsu. This jutsu is created to evade deadly attacks like what you just did. Everyone is amazed by the magic that they have just seen. That's a great move. I doubt anyone in this kingdom knew how to use such magic Master Makara thought. However, a sudden realization crosses over his mind. Naruto. The old man caught the attention of the blonde. That's an unusual name for a magic, the Kawarimi no Jutsu, as if it came from a different language. And I also didn't sense any magical energy from that technique, that includes the other attack that you have used that multiplies your blades, the one you call Shuriken Cage Bunshin, can you fill me up with that? Makarov questions the blonde with curious eyes. Everyone, including his three sparring partners, focuses their attention to the hokage. Here comes something Naruto thought. The truth is I cannot use magic like what I have said, I am a sage. Before I became a sage, I am a shinobi, or a ninja. Ninjas don't have magic affinity. However, we rely on a different source of power, called Chakra Chakra is the power that I used for my techniques, including those two moves. And I believe that mages can't use Chakra, just like on how a shinobi can't use magic. That's all of the information that I can provide for now. Naruto explained while smiling. Would you guys still let me join the guild even if I cannot use magic and I am not a wizard? Naruto asked worriedly. Of course. Makarov smiled. You said that want to join us, and as long as you will also accept us as your new family, we don't have any offense against it Naruto. What about you brats? The rest of the guild smiled and cheered at the blonde. We can talk about that later. For now, you will need to finish your fight first. Makarov suggested. This is the first time that I am fighting a real ninja. I'm all pumped up. Natsu's fist shivers from excitement. I didn't expect a ninja to be this powerful, but we will show you what wizards can do, Naruto. Grey clenches his fist together. Let's go, Yuzumaki Naruto. Urza shouted while smiling at the blonde. Thank you, Makarov Jiji. Thank you fairy tale. Naruto bowed slightly to show his gratitude. At this very moment, the place filled with warm smile of acceptance is instantly replaced by a cold atmosphere. Swirl of winds became a little more violent and birds start flying away as if sensing a sudden danger. Naruto's head slowly starts to rise from his bow. His face now became serious, and cold shivers run down the spine of everyone who looks into his now cold glaring eyes. 
Urza starts to sweat, Natsu's flames disappears as if the flames itself is frightened, while Grey, who is used on cold atmospheres due to his magic, cannot help but shiver in this new level of coldness. Naruto in front of them is like a different person from earlier. Let's make this a little serious, shall we? Naruto smiled with a glare towards the mage trio. Chunchun. Before the mages could react, Naruto suddenly disappears from where he is currently standing. He suddenly reappeared right in front of the trio, with his right hand pulled back forming a fist with his strength now enhanced with chakra Tsunade, aiming to punch someone. So fast. Natsu thought. Jump away to dodge. Urz shouted towards the two. The three jumped away in an attempt to dodge away from Naruto's incoming attack. The intensity of the strength that they have felt on Naruto's fist right now is almost the same as of the one he have used against Lullaby. If one of them got hit with that level of attack, that unlucky one will automatically be knocked out of the fight. However, Naruto is not really aiming at the trio. He knows that level of punch can cripple anyone if they got hit directly by it. He doesn't want to hurt this people who have just accepted him. They don't deserve it. He is actually aiming at the ground and also aiming that the trio will dodge away from him, which he got right. He redirected the punch to the ground after the trio jumped away, creating a quick earthquake and also some thick dust and flying rubbles. He is actually not aiming at us. We played right through the palm of his hand. Gray shouted, all three of them still are in midair. Then suddenly, a hand beneath the dust and rubbles suddenly grab his right leg. Then, the hand forcefully uses an overhead smash, sending Gray towards the ground, back flopping the ice wizard and causes immense pain. Naruto didn't enhance his strength in that move. He just used his base strength which is still above regular human strength due to his training with the Rakuto. Wah. Gray cried in pain. And within a split of a second, Naruto leans forward, his right leg kneeling to the ground, and aims a punch Gray's face head on. Gray still lying on the ground from the recent attack saw this, but his body still can't move due to pain. So he cannot react in time to the sudden fast movement by the blonde who is now about to hit his face with a punch. Gray already knew that he cannot dodge this punch. He just grits his teeth and prepares to take the punch that he knows that would immediately knock him out. He closes his eyes in anticipation as the punch draws near and prepare for another impact of pain. But it didn't came. He just felt a sudden blow of the wind in his face, making his black hair sway, he wonders what happened, so he slowly opens his eyes. He saw a fist in front of his face, just a few centimeters away from the expected impact. He rolled his eyes towards the right. He saw Naruto, still in the same kneeling position, staring at him coldly. Naruto himself stopped the punch. Concede, Gray, I don't want to hurt you further. Naruto said coldly. Gray blinks, then closed his eyes. He just realized that he don't stand any chance against this guy. Slowly opening his eyes, Gray grinned. Yes. This is my lost. In that instance, Naruto's cold glare became a warm smile. He slowly gets up from the kneeling position, offers a hand to the ice wizard so he can get up, then turns around towards the remaining two opponents and said while his back facing Gray. You're my first target because you are the long-range attacker. In the war, the ranged units were the ones who can bring massive damage to close combat fighters. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. You are strong, Gray. Gray smiled, still feeling pain from his back. I don't want any explanation. You have beaten me fair and square, Naruto. Naruto just nods, then starts walking towards the remaining two mages. Who's next then? Naruto's gaze became a cold glare again. Natsu and Urza cannot help but prepare for many unexpected attacks. The person approaching them is not reacting on instincts. He has a plan on every move and not wasting any movement. If they react recklessly like earlier, one of them again will fall like Grey. The guild is in awe in the display of Naruto's abilities, along with his character after defeating Grey. Even though Naruto is powerful enough, he still look out on his opponent in a fair judgment and don't want his opponent to experience unnecessary pain. Everyone in the guild smiled in respect at the newcomer, while Laki is smiling, since she have already known that Naruto is this kind of guy from the time that he have protected her. Naruto. Natsu's flames covers his body once again. You have defeated that exhibitionist, but you cannot defeat me in that same way. Natsu dashes towards. He thought that if he let Naruto takes the initiative again, he and Urza will be left in pinch once again. Wait Natsu. Urza attempts to stop the hot-headed dragon slayer, but it is too late. Higher dragons punch. Natsu aims straight at Naruto's face. Naruto leans sideways, and then Natsu aims a flaming kick towards Naruto's head once again. Naruto ducks, spins with a side step, and then disappeared from Natsu's view. Where did he go? Natsu stops his movements. He then suddenly felt two fingers violently thrusted in his butthole through his pants. Before realizing how painful it is, he quickly turns his head around his back and saw Naruto sitting in a squat position, his hands clasped together, with two index fingers pointing upwards. 
Pino has super legendary forbidden to jutsu technique. Thousand years of pain. The blonde grinning mischievously to the pink head. At that very instance, Natsu cried in pain while throwing himself on the guild members who were watching the fight. Laughters echoed everywhere, including Happy, while Natsu is rolling on the ground back and forth, holding his butthole due to pain. Damn it. Natsu cried, still cannot get up on his feet. Why did you do that? That is an attack. It is effective, right? If you repeat the same attack over and over against the same opponent, even anyone in the guild can do that technique against you to Bayo. Naruto grinned towards the pink head. That's an attack of a true man. Elfman roared. Natsu is defeated. Happy exclaimed while waving a small flag with Luz imprinted on it. Naruto then shifts his gaze to Urza. Now, this has become a one-on-one -on -one battle all of a sudden. After realizing this, the guild starts to get quiet as their laughter starts to disappear. The air became intense. Naruto is smiling at Urza, while Urza is glaring at Naruto. Don't think you can defeat me with the same way you defeated Grey and especially Natsu. Urza shouted. Of course, you are a girl Urza-chan. I will not do the attack that I have done to Natsu into you. Naruto pouted. Urza's eye twitches several times. The guild felt that Titania is pissed. Let's settle this like how warriors used to. Naruto. I am thinking the same way. You have my respect after all, Titania. Aside from everyone who is watching the fight on the ground, there were additional two members of the guild who have just arrived during the fight watches as how the match unfolds. Both of them are standing in the balcony of the backyard of their guild house, away from each other. That guy is very strong a hitted man, covered with various clothes to cover his identity, escorting a ragged cape with six staffs attached in his back spoke. The name of this mysterious figure is Mystigan, one of Fairy Tale's strongest S-class wizard. They have just arrived to report after finishing an S-class job to Makarov while intending to make other members of the guild sleep by casting a sleep spell, so no one among them will try to look out for his true identity. However, Mistigan didn't see any members of the guild in the hall, as everyone were watching a fight in the backyard of the guild. He just intended to leave to take advantage of the situation however, he saw Natsu, Grey and Urza fighting a single man caught his interest. Watching how the man defeated the fire mage and ice wizard, he has come to realize that this guy is not your ordinary person. It sure is rare for you to stay in the guild this long, set aside your occasional talking like that. Another spiky-haired blonde with lightning mark on his face and a headset while wearing a thick long jacket, taunted Mistigan. This guy is Laxus Dreyer, Makarov's grandson, and also one of the strongest guild member with the same S-class rank. But I have to admit, that punk is someone. He said while well, few lightning threads flicker from some part of his body while grinning as if seeing a new prey to destroy. Seeing another powerful person to join his guild will definitely provide him some entertainment. The guild didn't notice the presence of the two other powerful wizards who are watching the fight from the shadows. They are so caught up in the fight in front of them. The exception is only for Makarov and Naruto. Naruto, while not moving his face while facing Urza, rolls his eyes slightly to caught a glimpse of two mysterious figures in the guild balcony. He then redirects his gaze towards Master Makarov, and the old man just nodded. Realizing that the two figures are also members of the guild and not something to worry about, he returned his attention to the armored girl in front of him. Naruto gives a grin to the armored girl. This caught the girl off the guard and yells. What's funny? Urza narrowed her eyes. This guild really has powerful members. I can feel it. This will be great Databeo. Naruto said while touching the tip of his nose with his right thumb. Urza smiles at the compliment, Makarov just grins while closing his eyes at the same time, while the two S-class mages on the balcony were a little surprised, wondering how the blonde noticed them, even if they were concealing their presence. Of course. We are the strongest guild after all. Natsu roared while still holding his butt, thinking that they were the ones being praised by Naruto. The rest of the guild smiled at the compliment from the blonde as well, still not noticing the presence of the two S-class wizards just above them. I'll return the compliment with proof. Prepare yourself, Naruto. As Urza's body starts to glow, changing her armor into leopard-like design. Equip. Soaring armor. Urza stands with pride wearing her new armor. I see. That is Urza's resolution. Happy exclaimed who were beside Lucy and Natsu. What do you mean happy? Lucy got interested. Soaring armor increases Urza's speed in immeasurable levels. Since Naruto is so fast, Urza will need to level the battlefield. Why does she didn't use it while me and Grey were still in the fight? Natsu pouted. Baka. Imagine, if Urza sped up to catch up with Naruto's speed, how do you think we can possibly hit Naruto? To tell you the truth, I think we are holding Urza back while both of us are fighting together with her against Naruto. Grey retorted. Now, Urza can go all out since she will not need to think about protecting us while fighting. The members of the guild hearing Grey's comment nods. This will be the first time they will be seeing Urza fight without holding back. 
Naruto this time unsheats his own sword, the sword of Kusanagi, the very sword that serves as a memento from his brother at that very moment, Urza disappears from his line of sight. Naruto felt the presence suddenly beside him and dodges the incoming attack by ducking. Her speed goes up. Time to shift gears as well at that very moment, Naruto disappeared in Urza's line of sight as well. He also appears where Urza least expects him and attacks using the Kusanagi sword. Urza parries with her weapon, dashes backward, while Naruto is dashing forward to attack her. Urza braces her feet and also dashes towards Naruto, and their weapons once again met each other with a powerful clashing sound. They leap, dodge, attack, parry, dash, and defend as they attack each other with blinding speed. As soon as the sword fight heats up, most guild members can only hear the clashing metal sounds, but they can no longer track or even see their movement. Each time the two met with a clash, the leaves around them were sliced in half or creates a small crater where they set their foot. Some guild members are surprised while some are annoyed due to the speed of the weapon clash since they can no longer see their movements with their naked eyes. I could barely track them. Gray mentioned as his eyeballs keeps on shifting in random direction in an attempt to follow the two. What a high level sword battle. Kana shrugged as she just stares into nothingness as if giving up on following the battle with her eyes. However, things start to change after a few minutes. Urza is becoming more visible now, while Naruto continues to his recent usual speed, making Urza block or deflect his attack more than attacking him back. In that instance, Naruto sped up even more as if to corner Urza. The armored girl can do nothing but parry or dodge as her stamina starts to wind down. Naruto takes advantage of it as he gives a kick to her sideways without enhancing his strength with chakra. Urza blocks it using both of her arms but still send her flying back to the ground. Urza is now panting as sweat starts to become visible on her face. She looks at the blonde in front of him with almost to no signs of exhaustion. How come you have so much stamina? I have confidence on my own stamina, but for you to outlast it while we were moving with the same level of speed is somewhat unreal. Urza just stated how surprised she is on the blonde's stamina. From my place, we were trained to fight ever since we were six years old. As long as you have proper training, we, Shinobis, can fight for a whole week without being exhausted, you can only defeat us in a stamina battle by depleting our chakra. Naruto explained. Everyone is again surprised from Naruto's statement. Just how powerful Naruto's people can be. Makarov just thought. And I can also say that your stamina depletes faster than mine is because you were continuously trying to catch up with my speed. This will require your armor to absorb more magic in your body, thus exhausting you a lot faster Urza-chan. While me, on the other hand, just uses my very own stamina to take advantage of our fight. Naruto added. Urza's eyes went wide. She actually planned to exhaust Naruto in a battle of speed. But he reverses the situation once again in his favor and immediately deducted the weakness of her soaring armor. She played again in the palm of his hands. She clenched her fist and grit her teeth for thinking that her plans backfired her again in front of the same opponent. Naruto notices Urza's frustration and thinks that he must say something, Urza-chan, don't look so down. This caught Urza's attention. The place that I came from is always plagued with tension, constant battles and wars. I have been fighting for almost my entire life even before I arrived here. So I think it is natural for me to have better deception and strategy in a battle due to my experiences in the battlefield. To tell you the truth, I actually envy you guys you have not experienced the pain of war. Naruto smiles with his voice trailing off. He doesn't want to talk about his past, but he needs to in this very moment, only. The guild's atmosphere became somewhat melancholic after hearing something about the newcomer's past. Yes, they have been through some battles, but not in a war. Seeing your close friends die right beside you and cannot do anything about it since you might also die any moment is really painful. You need to get stronger and stronger for you to protect those who are important for you, even wishing to die before them just for the sake of the future. Naruto clenches his fist. This is why he doesn't want to talk about his past. But deep within him, he can remember those painful times. As much as he doesn't like to remember, it will always come back into his memory at full force once a single strand of his past surfaces in a situation. Urza visibly relaxed hearing a part of the boy's past. She too has a past that she wants to forget. But hearing Naruto's past makes him realize that he is also like her, needing someone who can understand her feelings. That's the very reason why she joined Fairy Tail, so that she can have people who can accept her and live like a family. Naruto, you really are strong. This is not about your physical abilities or power. You were always trying to face your shadows head on, not running away from it, and you can still smile warmly in front of everyone. And you continue to strive to become stronger to protect those who are important for you. With that, you have earned my trust. Urza smiled at him. The rest of the guild nods while smiling at him. It is not that I am lying about what I have said, but how come you guys can easily trust me and everything that I have said? 
You have just met me right. Naruto's eyes grew wide. Simple. By simply looking in your eyes. Your eyes gave warmth and honesty so much that it hurts. Urza said. Upon hearing this, Naruto closes her eyes. He actually didn't expect that this guild will accept him like this. He didn't even intend to have deep connection with them, since he is looking for a way back to return to the shinobi world. But it is inevitable. Now he understands why this is the best known guild in this kingdom. Not only because of power, but also this guild has a heart for their comrades. This thought made Naruto smile. Let's finish this Urza-chan. But I have a condition. I am thinking the same. What is your condition? Let's finish this with a single move using a powerful or effective attack. Agreed. Show me your true power, Naruto. In that instance, Urza's body is again enveloped in a bright light. She then changes her armor to the most appropriate one for the situation. Equip. Purgatory armor. Urza is then covered with armor with a combination of black and gray color and a large heavy sword that uniforms her armor. The purgatory armor, an armor with a powerful offensive capability. Levi is reading a book aloud, reading the powers of Urza's new armor. I know Naruto-sen is powerful, but this time, it really is going to be overboard. You shouldn't be worrying too much about that. Marahin spoke calmly. Just remember, Naruto-sen is the one who have suggested this bargain. This means he has an ace up his sleeve. The guild members stare at the two opposing warriors while holding their breath. They are wondering what kind of final attack those two powerful individuals will do. Mistigan and Laxa seem to be interested about the outcome as well. Naruto then withdraws his Kusanagi sword, then draws out one Horatian kunai, then prepares a fighting stance. Urza then prepares to attack as she shifts her weight in her right leg, while the large sword is pulled back behind her, preparing for a powerful swinging attack, in case Naruto is already within her range. Go! Makarov shouted. Naruto and Urza dash towards each other at the same time. Even if Urza is no longer wearing the soaring armor, she has at least an overview of Naruto's speed, and she believes that she can maneuver herself in the proper position if Naruto uses such speed in a head-on collision. Hiya. Urza charges with her full might. On the other hand, Naruto throws his Horatian kunai directly towards Urza's head while dashing forward and also pulls back his right hand while forming a fist, as if attempting to counter-attack Urza's sword with a punch. He throws the short knife aiming in my head, even if he knows that I can easily dodge it. Does he really think that is enough to distract my incoming attack? Urza thought, as well as the other guild members watching, including Makarov, Mistigan and Laxus. Urza shifts tilts her head to dodge the kunai, making it pass through the side of her head. They came closer to each other. The first one who can land an attack is the winner, and the loser will definitely take a painful blow. There is no way to dodge or change their movements as they were dashing towards each other. Everything will be decided in one powerful attack from either of them. The key. Urza launches her attack as soon as Naruto enters her range. Naruto is barehanded, while Urza is holding a large sword, thus giving the redhead much longer reach than the blonde. She swings her sword violently to the incoming blonde. She knows Naruto is fast, so much faster than her. But this time, no matter how fast he is, within her range, she can definitely hit him with all her might. Urza swings her sword down to the incoming blonde. The swing creates a large wave that cuts down multiple trees and rocks near the vicinity. Everyone in the guild is surprised with the destructive power of Urza's attack. However, something is not right. Naruto simply disappeared and now out of Urza's line of sight. The armored girl then felt a sharp metallic blade pointing in her neck. She rolled her eyes in her left, she saw Naruto's gaze glaring coldly at her. The blade that he uses to point into her neck is the same blade he has thrown while she was dashing towards him. The guild is dumbstruck. Naruto simply flashes out of their sight and appeared right behind Urza. Concede, Urza. Naruto said with a cold voice. She cannot think of anything. There is no way she can possibly counter-attack anymore, especially against a weapon who were already pointing from her neck. A single movement from her will automatically mean death in a real battle. Thus, since this is a sparring, she closes her eyes and smiled. You win. I admit my defeat. Naruto Fairy Tale Fanfic Chapter 4 Certain Circumstances The guild members went back to the guild house, still dumbstruck and speechless on how the battle ends. They are wondering how can someone possibly disappear and reappear out of nowhere. Mistigan and Laxus, who are still unnoticed, stood still from where they were currently standing, thinking how possible for a man to move in that instantaneous speed. Upon returning to the guild, Naruto is bombarded with questions regarding how he can move that fast. As much as Naruto want to forget what have happened during the fight, he starts to get overwhelmed by the members of the guild. Until a mighty voice of an armored woman echoed throughout the guild. Silence. Give Naruto a little space. Urza ordered the guild members and they get away from Naruto instantly. Urza then walked towards Naruto and drags him to sit in one of the chairs with tables near the guild bar where Makarov and Marahin were staying. 
they were followed by Natsu, Grey, Lucy, Happy and Lockie and sit in the same table, while Elfman, Kana, Levy, Jet and Roy sit on the next table, with Loke and Macau, along with Wakaba sit in the other table, so they can also eavesdrop in the conversation. Not used in this kind of attention, Naruto just stared at his lap as if bowing down. Marahin went into their tables and gives them an orange juice for refreshment. Naruto smiles for gratitude, while Marahin smiled widely in return, but did not return to her station and stands in the side of their table. Well, Naruto, you know that I have admitted my defeat, right? Urza starts talking. But I am not satisfied until I have heard your explanation. How were you able to instantly disappear and reappeared behind me during our final attack? No matter how fast you are, if you have specific momentum towards your movement, you should not be able to maneuver your body easily. Naruto expected that question. This also caught the attention of people surrounding him as they were interested how it is possible. Naruto sighs. He cannot just get away with this without explanation. He pulls out his Hiroshin kunai again and places it on the table. This is not an ordinary weapon. Naruto stated. This is what I call the Hiroshin kunai. I have imbued my chakra in this kunai so that I can flash directly from my recent location to where this weapon currently is as long as it is within the Horatian's range. This technique is a memento from my father. Naruto smiled while stating the last part of his statement. Amazing. Ninjas really have cool moves. Can you teach me? Natsu's eyes sparkled. You cannot learn that Natsu. You are not a ninja. Happy said at the pink head. That's right. You must learn the basics of chakra first before anything else. And since you guys don't have chakra system and has magic system in your body, you cannot use chakras. Naruto said. And besides, only me and my father has a bloodline that can master that technique. Urza nodded from the information. Your tricks and techniques are really amazing Naruto. I am glad to welcome you to the guild. Welcome to Fairy Tail. Urza stretches her hand for a handshake. Urza, Naruto sent still don't have a guild stamp and an official statement or announcement from Master. So he is still not an official member. Marahin spoke. But Master already agrees during the fight right? Urza shifted her glance in the old man. The statements and stamps are for formalities only. I have already accepted you to join the guild Naruto. However, we would need to talk first about something before you receive your guild stamp. Makarov stated while his attention is on the newcomer. Naruto just nods. All right brats. Stay here for a while. Naruto, let's go upstairs in my office. Naruto stood up and gives a smile to those who are near him then proceeds to follow the master who is now walking towards the second floor. However, Laki chases Naruto and calls his attention. Naruto. Naruto turns around, then give a wondering look towards Laki. Um, I would just want to ask if we can talk later. Will it be okay? Laki said while staring at his eyes. Sure. I'll just approach you then if there won't be any other things to do. You're my first friend here after all. See you Laki-chan. Naruto waves at the girl with his fox grin and then starts walking towards the old man. My, my loke spoke behind Loki. Someone is already interested on the newcomer. While pushing his eyeglasses. While well, what's wrong with that I I am his first friend. Don't misinterpret that. Loki pouted while a little blush forms on her cheeks. Don't be like that to Loki. Urza interrupted Loke's teasing. She is just interested to Naruto. Urza San Loki smiled. What's wrong with showing your interest? I also am interested to Naruto. Urza said with a straight face. Everyone hearing it face palmed. Hey. What's with that reaction? Urza's veins starts to bulge. Itania really is the queen of misinterpretation Marahin just thought. Suddenly, a powerful presence enveloped the guild's atmosphere. Everyone became dizzy and almost everyone starts to fall down, falling to sleep, one by one. This caught Makarov and Naruto's attention. Marahin gets dizzy and falls down to the floor. This is Grey muttered. I felt sleepy Laki also falls down to the floor. Urza grits her teeth as if fighting the powerful sleep spell enveloping everyone. But to no avail, she have also fallen to sleep along with Natsu, Grey, Lucy and the others. In the middle of the walkway where sleeping bodies were laying, Mystigan walks towards Master and Naruto. As mysterious as always, he casts a sleep spell into his own guildmates to protect his identity. Mystigan Makarov quickly dispelled the sleep magic on him only, while Naruto dispels it using his chakra. He narrows his eyes towards the mysterious figure. So this young man also caught your attention. Mystigan nods. Naruto remembers Kakashi upon seeing the guy who has his face also covered. He then realized that he casts the sleeping spell to protect his identity and decides to relax. Naruto, he will also be joining us in my office. Will it be okay for you? Makarov looks at the blonde before stepping upstairs. Naruto nods, seeing that Makarov and this mysterious person already have an idea about his true reason why he decides to join Fairy Tail. So he don't need to hide it in front of these two. 
so Naruto just nods for confirmation. Vistigan, undo the sleeping magic to the children upon entering my office. Makarov commanded to the hooded person. After the three enters the office, the guild members shot wide awake, except Natsu. Scene change. This feels like Mistigan is here. Muttered by Wakaba. That bastard Macau shakes his head. He always uses such super powerful magic Levy whispered while rubbing her eyes. Mistigan Lucy spoke half awake. He is one of the strongest men in fairy tale Elfman explained to Lucy. He always makes everyone fell asleep because he don't want others to know his identity. Gray also mentioned. He always put everyone to sleep each time he reports about his previous job to master, while also getting a new job, then leaves like that. What's with that? That's way too suspicious. Lucy responded. But why did he come budding into master along with Naruto? Does he also want to meet Naruto properly? Kana said before drinking another barrel of alcohol. Mistigan actually didn't like to stay long in the guild. To see him acknowledging someone like that, this means Naruto really is someone or there might be another important reason that involves Naruto. Marahin joins the conversation. That's the best possible conclusion. Gray said. Only Master knows Mistigan's true identity. Now, Naruto have the opportunity to meet him even though he have just joined the guild. No, I know what he looks like too. This statement came from a voice on the other side of the second floor. The voice is from Laxus Dreyer, staring down arrogantly on his guild mates. Laxus you were here. Wakaba mentioned as he and Elfman walks towards the arrogant blonde, looking up at him since they were on the first floor. It is rare to see you here. Another one of the strongest. Gray informed Lucy while showing his disinterest. Mistigan shy. So keep your noses out of it. Laxus said while grinning mischievously. Laxus. Let's fight. Natsu just wakes up from Mistigan's sleep spell, immediately challenges the newly arrived member. We were just beaten by Urza and Naruto a few moments ago. Gray shouted at the pink head. That's right. If you can't even beat Urza and the new guy, there's no way you could beat me. Laxus taunted. What are you implying? Urza snapped out of the S-class wizard statement. She is now pissed with the cockiness of the man with headphones. Whoa, calm down Urza Gray is now getting tired of the scene. I am the strongest. Laxus exclaimed boastfully with his arms stretched wide open. The rest of the guild is now also annoyed with the cockiness of the man. Don't talk like you are the best if you haven't faced who really is the strongest yet. Natsu roared. Who is the strongest? You don't make me laugh. Once Naruto joins the guild officially and Gildert's returns, you will definitely know your place in the guild Laxus. Urza pointed her index finger into the arrogant mage. Who, you may be right about the geezer, but with that whiskered punk that defeated you earlier. I doubt he can last fighting me within 10 seconds. Laxus smiled cockily. I will not be giving up my seat as the strongest wizard in fairy tale for anyone. Not Urza, Mistigan and that newcomer punk. I am the strongest. Laxus glared at every member of the guild while looking down on them. Scene change. Barely are a noisy bunch. Naruto said after entering Makarov's office while smiling and rubbing the back of his head with his right hand. Mistigan just nods, again. Makarov just simple smiles. Uzumaki Naruto, let's get this started. Makarov stated seriously. Naruto nods, then slams the palm of his hand to the floor, much to the surprise of Makarov and Mistigan. A special seal appears where Naruto's palm has been touching, and the seal expands throughout the room. I have set a sound barrier seal, so no one from the outside of this room can hear what we will be talking about. Naruto said while standing up. Makarov nods with a blonde's initiative. You really have great set of skills for someone who came from another world. Mistigan spoke as if he already knows where they came from. This caught Naruto's attention. How did you know that Mistigan? Naruto asks in curious eyes. In that moment, Mistigan removes the clothes from his head and reveals his face. He has blue hair and special birthmarks on the right part of his face. I am known here in this world as Mistigan. But in my real world, I am Jell Fernandez. You have one convenient spell there so I don't need to hide my appearance in front of you or worry about others overhearing us. Mistigan spoke while Master is just listening to the two. In your real world. But why do you need to hide your own identity databeo? I will start the explanation so you can have an overview why did Master Makarov call you here and also how did I know that you were not from this world. Mistigan spoke calmly. Naruto didn't respond and stares at him with serious eyes, opting him to continue. I think you already know that this is Earthland, a place run by magic however, there is a parallel world that exists beyond Earthland's dimension itself, known as Adolas. That's the place where I came from. So we both came from other worlds. How did you get here? Naruto asked the critical question in an attempt to discover a way to travel into worlds and use the same means if possible to return to the shinobi world. 
I have been sucked out of my own dimension, landing myself here with un- So technically, this time, you don't also know a way on how to return into your own world. Actually, my world, Idolas, is the one sucking out something out of Earthland for some unknown reason. They were using different space-time warping magic to suck out things here and will definitely kill any living ones who will be sucked into it automatically. Mystigan informed. That is what I call Anima. And since I came from that world, I want to prevent Anima from sucking things from this world. So I made it my personal mission to protect this world from Anima as much as possible. I see. Naruto thought. He thought he have already found a possible way to return to the shinobi world, the Anima, but is definitely risky. And most of all, Anima is only a transportation means from Earthland to Adolas, so he needs to find another way for the same means towards his own world. At least, he have confirmed two things. He also have a fellow dimension traveler in this guild, and there is an actual way to travel into dimensions. Naruto thought that information is enough for now. But why are you hiding your true identity? If we were the same, I think there should be no reason to hide it right. Naruto pointed out another question. Like I have said, I am known as Jell Fernandez in my own world. Earthland and Adolas are parallel worlds from each other. Every existence from Adolas will going to have the same counterpart existence in this world. So you can conclude that there is another Jell Fernandez in this world, the one that actually born here in Earthland. So you have a look alike. Naruto remembers his cage bunchens. But what's the matter with that? I mean, even if you have a look alike, you are still you, and I think the guild will accept you even if you have a look alike. I know that. But Jell Fernandez of this world gives Urza, herself, bad memories from her past. I don't want to explain everything in front of her. Each time that she will look into my face, she will definitely remember her painful past that she want to forget that's why she have joined Fairy Tale. Urza also has a dark past. Naruto frowns. He closes his eyes and thought that it would be best to not butt deeper into this. Back to your first question regarding on how did I know that you came from Otherworld as well like me, I have known it while watching your fight against Urza, Natsu and Grey. Mystigan changes topic. I think Master already knew it as well. Naruto shifted his gaze towards the small old man. So you do already know Makarov Jiji? Yes. I already have an idea. This world, as you know, is run by magic as old as I am, I have not known anything about chakra that you were using. Your fighting style is also very different to that of the wizards. When you mention that you cannot use magic and wizards cannot use chakra, that is enough for me to realize it kid. Makarov said. I have also realized what master have just said. Mystigan also reaffirms. Earthland and Adolas both uses magic. Seeing your power, I have come to conclude that you came from another dimension other than Adolas. Naruto relaxes, looks like I don't have to explain that much anymore Databeo. Then he looks at the window. The reason why I want to join Fairy Tail is for me to have a larger network of information so I can find the appropriate information to go back to my true world, the shinobi world. What happened in your world and why are you transported here? Makarov asked the blonde. Naruto don't want to explain what have happened in his own world, so he just explained it as brief as possible. You have already known that my world is plagued in war. This is due to power, the chakra itself. This leads to conflict and bloodshed, and many lives were sacrificed. I have been chosen to seal away the chakra system into the shinobi world, at the cost of my own existence. I didn't die, I just lost my existence and plunged in a dimension rift, then landed here in Earthland where my existence is present. Now that I have my own existence, I can go back to my own dimension using my Earthland's existence and be with my precious people again. Makarov and Mystigan stared seriously at the blonde. To have such sense of responsibility at a very young age, they got a newfound respect to the sage. Naruto, just who are you in your world? Makarov just muttered. I am the Rakudame Hokage of my village. The Hokage is the one who leads and represents the village. Naruto smiled proudly. That is why I will do everything for the sake of my village and my world. Now, the two who are listening to him are dumbstruck. The young man in front of them is such a high official from the world that he just came from. Sure though Makarov is a guild master, but he is leading his children in a mage guild. But this kid is the leader of an entire village itself. You really are someone. Makarov just said in awe. As the leader of your village, will it be really okay with you to be a member of Fairy Tail and have me as your guild master? I am on a different world. I don't have any titles here. Being a Hokage is my dream ever since I am young. Aside from that, I don't care about other trivial things Databeo. Naruto offers a big smile. Okay. I have seen your resolve. I will help you then. Mystigan starts covering his face again with clothes. If I happen to encounter any information regarding on a possibility to travel back into your own world, I will inform you every once in a while. I hope you have a good time while being a member of Fairy Tale for the time being. Thank you Mystigan. Your secret is safe with me. Naruto smiles. 
I'll be also looking for information by myself as well. Mistigan nods then disappears from the office. After a few seconds, Makarov asks another question into the blonde. Just how powerful are you, Naruto? I can feel an overwhelming power within you. And during your fight with three of my most powerful mages, I can sense that you were holding back, a lot. Makarov stated his wonder. This is an inevitable question. To tell you the truth, I also do not know what is the extent of my abilities and powers as of now. So I cannot answer that question, Makarov Jiji. Naruto said calmly. Makarov narrowed his eyes, so you haven't faced an opponent yet that forces you to use your full power. Naruto just nods. In my world, I have faced a self-proclaimed god and also faced the very person who wants to destroy my world itself, and I beat them. I think that should be enough overview of my full power for now, Master Makarov. Naruto shrugged as if informing the old man that he don't want to talk about it anymore. Makarov just closed his eyes while digesting the recent information from the blonde. He have already known that Naruto is a powerful individual. But saying he defeated such powerful adversaries, while now also mentioning that he have still not used the full extent of his power, shivers run down to Makarov's spine. The hour that powerful? Makarov just stated in wonder. Naruto didn't respond as if trying to end the conversation. After a few minutes of silence, Makarov handed Naruto the guild's registration form. It's all up to you now, young Hokage. Makarov smiled. Thank you, Makarov Jiji. Naruto signs up the registration form. Name? Yuzumaki Naruto. Age? 17. Likes. Training, food of the GOTS Raymond. Dislikes. Arrogant bastards, being underestimated. Magic. Chakra magic. Code name. Hokage Zenin. Makarov reads Naruto's registration form after filing it up. Chakra magic huh? Very clever, Naruto. Let's go downstairs so Mira can give Mark you with our guild stamp. Naruto nods as the two starts walking towards the exit of the office. Scene change. Where do you want to have your stamp? Marahin smiled into Naruto. Naruto looked around and see Lucy's guild mark on the back of her right hand. All right. Please put it on the back of the palm of my left hand then Marahin. As he shows his left hand. And make it color orange. Naruto smiled at the silver head. Marahin proceeds and then stamps the guild mark to the Hokage Zenin. You are now an official member of Fairy Tail, Yuzumaki Naruto. Exclamant by Makarov. Let's give him a warm welcoming party. The guild roared and cheered by the declaration. Naruto smiled with the acceptance and shouts, let's get along well, fairy tale. The Aya. And fairy tale's usual festivities continues. Scene change. Lucky chan Naruto called out to the girl staring intently in the guild request board. It is already afternoon. Naruto. Congratulations on being an official guild member. Lucky gives a wide smile at the blonde. Naruto scratches the back of his head. Ma, ma, actually, I didn't expect to be accepted into fairy tale that easily. By the way, what do you want to talk about? My talk with Makarov Jiji is over. Accepted into fairy tale that easily, huh? You have just fought and defeated fairy tale's strongest team. Lucky pouted in her head. Um, now that you are an official member, what do you plan to do now? Naruto pondered about the Meganiko's question. Well, since I am new to this place, I am pretty broke. I plan on taking missions to earn some bucks. Is this the board where I can take one? He pointed at the board where Lucky is recently staring at. Missions? Lucky thought. We didn't call it missions. They are jobs, offered by clients. The price or pay of the job depends on the job's difficulty and the offered amount of the client. Actually, um I have been looking for a job here that we can do together Ahaha Lucky smiles shyly with a blush. Naruto smiles at the idea. Thank you Lucky chan Actually, that's my next question. I didn't know much about jobs and about the places where the jobs are needed to be done. Since you were my first friend here, I would like to ask you if you can accompany me for a while until I get used to it databeo. Then gives his usual goofy smile. Laki nods her head frantically. Yes. I would like that. Burahin and Master then interferes with the two. Very well. Looks like you have decided to take on jobs immediately right after the day that you have become an official fairy tale member, young Hokage. Makarov Jiji, you don't have to call me like that. I am just a regular guild member here. Naruto said. Do you have any recommended jobs that we can take for now? I know you have the ability to finish a job even though you are a new member. I have seen a fraction of what you can do, Naruto. So I think you can take on A-class jobs now. D-rank will going to be a walk in the park for you. Makarov recommended. A-class? Isn't it a little too soon, master? Marahin is quite surprised by the old man's recommendation. Not really. You know it too, right? This guy just defeated Fairy Tail's strongest team with him holding back. He can become one of our guild's S-class wizards in no time. Makarov said. 
Everyone who have heard Makarov is just as surprised as Marahin. Well, they don't have to object about that. Naruto is just pretty powerful. So much for a reputation in my first day databayo Naruto thought. Thank you for believing in me Makarov Jiji. Which among these requests can Laki and I take then? Marahin then pointed out a request that is quite unusual. It has nothing but help. In its title and the reward is 7500 000 joules. This job has just arrived earlier and I believe that it should be needed to be taken within two days. I will recommend Master to ask Urza's team for this job since we don't have any information regarding this job aside from the help message and the price of the job. The price also costs around an A class to S class. Since Master believes in you, I would like recommend this to you, Naruto-san. Naruto and Laki look at the request. Naruto smiled while Laki is quite sweating. We accepted that Abeo. Naruto. I know you are capable of handling such jobs. But how about me? I am just a newbie in fairy tale just like you and my magic is not that powerful. Laki retorted while pouting. It's just Alrit. I will protect you. Naruto gives a nice guy pose on Laki. Marahin and Makarov smiled. Even though this guy is powerful enough on his own, he is still standing with them on the same ground. Urza then interfered. I agree with Laki's first statement. Urza said seriously. I believe you are capable of handling A-class or even S-class jobs on your own Naruto, but you are new on taking jobs. Do you have any clue or information how to finish this job? Actually, seeing the request poster, I already have an information. Naruto said while holding the request paper. First, this is sent by someone with a high profile from your kingdom, by either an official or by some patriarchs. Second, this patriarch is someone is familiar with Fairy Tail Guild. Urza's eyes narrows, while Marahin looks at Naruto in curious eyes. Makarov's expression didn't change, as if opting him to continue, while Laki is dumbfounded. Then Urza asked, how come do you get that information easily just by looking at the request poster? I am used on taking jobs in the place where I came from. Naruto explained. We call it missions. The higher the rank of the mission, the higher their difficulty is. I have been taking missions ever since I am 10 years old. 10 years old. Laki thought. What kind of life and past do you really have, Naruto? Based on looking at the poster, I have said that the request came from a high-profile person from the kingdom by simply seeing the help and the price of the pay. It don't indicate the name of the sender, meaning he intends to keep his privacy. And the request analyst that sends the request to Fairy Tail will not accept a request from just a nobody. Meaning even if it didn't indicate the sender through the poster, the analyst accept to send the request to the guild because it is requested formally by the sender. And who is the sender of the request that can have power over the request analysts? The high official of the kingdom of Fiori Urza then nods with her eyes now neutral. Naruto may look dumb at sometimes, but he has keen analytic ability. Laki just nodded by how Naruto deducted the information. But since we now have an idea that this is sent by a high-profile person, shouldn't we let this job be handled by other wizards? I mean, we were dealing with someone from the kingdom here. We were just newbies here in the guild Naruto. That's right. Master, shall we include another person in this job request? Murahin looked at the old man. Urza cannot join since she were just freed from prison earlier, along with Natsu from the council. Mira is not taking jobs for a while now, hm, Kana. Yes. She will fit in the role. She has been a member of Fairy Tail since she was young and has experience in taking jobs from the kingdom. Makarov said. Interesting. Kana joins in, but not before throwing her wine barrel that she have just emptied. This would be great to kill some boredom. Taking a job with two rookies and for the kingdom will be quite a job. Naruto and Laki's eye twitch at the same time. Kana, you will also evaluate how Naruto will perform in this job as a new member of Fairy Tail, since this is an A-rank job. I understand. What time should we leave tomorrow? Kana prompts the two newbie. They can't be helped right. We leave tomorrow morning Kana-san. Why can't we leave today Dadabeo? Girls have things that were needed to be prepared first before going into jobs. You should always think about that Naruto-kun. Kana said with slight flirting tone while clinging her right arm in the blonde's neck. Naruto felt a shiver. Boy, Kana. Urza protested on the girl's behavior. Ara, Ara, Naruto-san is not good with girls with attitude like Kana. Good to know that you were not a pervert. Marahin smiled. Naruto blushes from the remark. Actually, I am not good at handling girls. I always got rejected back in my place by the girl that I used to like since she already liked someone else. I give up my feelings for her before the war and just focused on training to become stronger and stronger to protect my precious people. I never got conversation with girls like this ever since. I apologize Dadabeo. Naruto scratches the back of his head while looking down, blushing. Another sucker punch hit the girls who were just talking to him. Makarov notices this and just smiled mischievously. 
This place will be a lot different than your place when it comes to girls, Makarov thought. You were rejected. Maki with her eyes showing surprise. Unbelievable, Marahin just muttered. Do you mean you haven't had a girlfriend ever since birth? Urza crossed her arms. The girl that you like didn't know what she had just lost. Kana just nods her head. Naruto is more surprised by the reaction of the girls. He cannot feel any sympathy. But it is something different. Is it really that bad that I don't have a girlfriend yet? Naruto just asked curiously. The girls just shrugged at the question, much to Naruto's annoyance. Naruto then said. Most males in our guild also don't have girlfriends as well, I guess. I think it is normal. Naruto nods three times while crossing his arms. This kid is has keen analytic ability but is dumb in common situations. Makarov spoke on his head before interrupting the conversation. Very well. It will be best to leave tomorrow morning so you kids can take the train to the capital. It seemed that you were prepared for the job Naruto, but Laki and Kana are not yet. Give them time to prepare, Hokage. The old man smirked then to the newcomer. I understand. But I don't know where should I stay. I don't have a house or money that I can use to rent a room for the night. That's why I am eager to take a job. Naruto stated the fact. I see. That's why you were eager to take on jobs. You were broke. Makarov just said while smiling. Don't worry about it then. I'll just sleep at the forest. I will train before I sleep. I'll be alright. Naruto then turns around and starts walking towards the exit of the guild. He then waved from behind at the girls who were just talking with him. See you tomorrow guys. He saw Grey and Natsu arguing something about Laxus while Elfman laughing at them. I will not allow you to sleep in the forest. You are now a member of our family now. You don't have to treat yourself as an outcast. Makarov said while the rest of the guild now looks at the blonde upon hearing their master's voice. It is not like that. I will train in the outskirts Makarov Jiji. Then sleep after that. I already am used to it. Laki Chan knows that. John and Naruto said as he disappeared in a swirl of wind upon reaching the fairy tale exit. The old man then looks at the Meganiko with a curious glance. Hi. Naruto can sleep well in the forest. Laki remembered the time when she saw how Naruto sleeps while meditating. I think he is training himself while sleeping. When I saw him like that, it felt like he is one with nature. Laki added with a slight blush. One with nature? Can you elaborate that? Makarov raises an eyebrow. Um, I don't know how should I put it, but when I wake up in the morning when we were on our route back to the city, I saw him in his meditating position while sleeping. He has birds on his head, shoulder and they are playing around on his body and around him, as if they were talking with him while he was sleeping. Watching him like that and felt like it is very calming. Laki said with dreamy eyes. Even in his sleep, he is training. I can't believe it. Makarov just mentioned in his head. Boy. Where did Naruto go Jai-chan? Natsu shouts on the group while grabbing Grey's shirt as if ceasing the fight for a moment, while Grey also looking at the group. He said that he will go training for a while in the outskirts before looking for a place where to sleep. Makarov said while shutting his eyes. Whoa. Training. I would like to join him. Natsu said while breathing fire from his mouth. Where is he? The Urza, Kana and Marahin imagines Naruto in his meditating position while surrounded by birds and compare it with Natsu's fiery attitude as of the moment and they just face palmed on their mind. Natsu, I don't think you will fit in the kind of training that Naruto used to take. Marahin mentioned while waving her right hand in front of her face. Scene change. Night starts to fall. Naruto is walking towards the city of Magnolia's exit. Thinking about what happened the whole day, he thought everything go well so he deserves to treat himself. I didn't expect fairy tale would accept me easily just like that. But they really were interesting. Then, he noticed someone standing in front a few meters of him, as if waiting for him. It is the same presence with one of the two mysterious guys that were watching his fight earlier with Urza's team. He have already known that one of those guys is Mystigan. So this guy must be the other S-class wizard of fairy tale, with blonde hair and arrogant looks. Laxus Drare. Then, without any warning, Laxus clad himself with lightning, then dashes towards Naruto in a very fast movement, aiming a punch with his right hand. His magic is just like the Rakage Jijis. But not on the same level Naruto just remembered the third Rakage, who is Inido Tensei, and fourth Rakage, A, whom he have fought in a battle of speed during the fourth great ninja world war. But why did he suddenly attack me? The crash was heard, and a few smoke and rubbles flew by from the impact. Laxus punch hits Naruto, as his fist felt the impact. Laxus grins, thinking that this guy is just another weak addition to the guild. He tried to pull out his fist from the impact while his body still is covered with lightning. Then he just noticed that he can't pull it out. The smoke clears, then Laxus notices that a hand is grabbing his fist. It was Naruto's left hand. Naruto stares at him in a serious glare. Laxus examined the guy's condition quickly. 
He is not hurt and no sign of any injuries, meaning that Naruto just blocks his lightning punch with his left hand. Laxus grin widens, twists his body, then attempts for a kick using his right leg, while Naruto's still not letting go of his right fist. Naruto just smirks in another attempt to attack him. Since Laxus shifts his entire body weight into his left leg while his right leg aims to kick him, following the momentum of Laxus' movement, Naruto just trips Laxus' left leg quickly before Laxus' kick lands. Lax's facial expression change from a grin to anger, due to him losing balance, changes into his lightning form, then fly away from Naruto several meters away from each other. Naruto just stares at him in a serious face, still not moving from where he is currently standing during Laxus's attack. Laxus grins once again mischievously at the other blonde. Looks like your power is not just a fluke, new guy. Laxus remarked. I don't know if I should accept your statement as a compliment. Naruto said. Attacking your guildmate all of a sudden is not good you know. Let's just say I have my own way of testing newcomers. And I believe you deserve it. Seeing another powerful guy in the guild aside from Mistigan is quite something. Urza, Natsu, Grey, and the others were also strong. Don't just count them out like you have known the guild so much. Those three that you defeat effortlessly. Strong. You gotta be kidding me. Fairy Tail became a weak guild because those three became the guild standard of being strong. Just look at me, you, Mistigan and the older geezer that you have not met yet. We should be the standard of being strong in the guild. Looks like in every place, there will always be someone who looks high on himself while looking down into others, Naruto thought while thinking about Ichiha Bido. What are you pointing out then, Laxus? The guild must be changed. The weaklings must be thrown out and the strong ones must remain. Fairy Tail should make others tremble upon hearing the guild's name. Fairy Tail should be known as the strongest guild. Fairy Tail is already the strongest guild right? Not yet. I want the guild to become the strongest in history. We have different point of view Laxus. I would rather make the other people view me and my guild, fairy tale, with respect, not by fear. Naruto starts to walk away. Just like Mystigan, huh? Laxus grins. We'll see about that. I acknowledge you, Naruto. But I just want to warn you, don't be on my bad side. Not wanting to argue with the arrogant guy anymore, Naruto didn't turn around and just waved his right hand. I have to say, don't get in my way, Naruto Laxus thought as he walks away towards the fairy tale guild's direction. Author's note. Finally done so many things to do so many things to think about before you guys could ask why Mistigan became talkative in this chat. Well, Mistigan don't need to hide anything from Naruto. And also, Mistigan is quite talkative in important conversations like from what happened in Adolas. He talks a lot back there. Naruto Fairy Tail Fanfic Chapter 5 Black Crow. Author's note. Fairy Tail belongs to Hiromishima and Naruto to Misashi Kishimoto. I'm just borrowing their characters for this story. After his little confrontation with Laxus, Naruto has arrived in the outskirts of the city of Magnolia and already found a perfect place where he can meditate. He sat on his usual meditating position on the largest branch of the tall tree nearest to the river. He concealed his presence that even the birds considered him as part of the nature like them. The Sinjutsu chakra here in this world really is great. Naruto then decided to sleep as he sits down into his meditating position. After calming down his mind and drifting himself to sleep, Naruto began training within his mindscape. This training method has been taught to him by the sage of the six paths himself. While he is awake, he can gather Sinjutsu chakra passively even while moving due to his Senju part body structure. However, in his meditating position, he can gather twice or even thrice the amount of Sinjutsu chakra to mix into his own chakra. Doing so allows him to use Senen mode level 1 and Senen mode level 2 anytime he wishes to without the drawback of sage mode. While doing so, he is also storing his own chakra on the diamond mark in his forehead, like Tsunade, which is hidden due to his forehead protector. This will also allow him to use the Sanin's exclusive technique, the Byakugu. And also, Naruto is storing his Sinjutsu chakra on his round-shaped orange-colored seal on his forehead, stocking it so he can also access Sinjutsu chakra and enter into a much more powerful Senen mode than Senen mode level 2. While in his mindscape, Naruto, along with several thousand shadow clones, were training for using his abilities such as his elements, Kekai Genkai, Eight Gates, Bijuus and Jubi's Chakra Control, Dragon Lacrima and such. So technically, Naruto's body is asleep while his mind is training, allowing him to gain the experiences of his training into physical body when he wakes up. This training is exclusive only to Naruto due to the fact that he has a mindscape where the Bijuus and Jubi's Chakra were stored, as if it is a separate world in his own mind. He will remain in this position for 9 hours for his usual physical body rest. Page break. In front of the fairy tale guild the next morning, three figures were waiting for someone to arrive. They were a Meganiko, a bikini-wearing brunette, and a small old man. Where is he? I thought he have agreed to met with us this morning. 
Kana annoyingly kicks a stone in front of her, sending it flying. Don't be like that. Remember, Naruto slept in the forest. It is pretty far from here. Laki tried to calm her down. But it will only be 20 minutes before the train leaves. The brunette continuously taps the ground with his feet. Makarov notices something. He's here. Then, sudden poof in front of them startled the two females except Makarov, who raises an eyebrow. The smoke clears and Naruto appeared out of the smoke while scratching his head. Sorry, I am late. I got lost in the path of life databeo. Naruto grins Ayla Kakashi. The three face palmed from Naruto's explanation. Very well, at least you're here now. Makarov handed the request poster into Naruto. Naruto, you will be the team leader due to your abilities. Kana, as the older guild member among you three, observed Naruto's performance as a new member of the guild and Laki's performance with you as a team, but you were still a member of their team in this job. Great. Then I don't have to worry about reporting everything. Good luck Naruto. Kana smiles while smacking the blonde's back, sending him lounging forward comically. Well, so much for a morning greeting. I understand that Jiji. We should be leaving now. Are you ready, Laki-chan, Kana? Naruto looks at the two. The two girls just nod their heads with a smile. Take care, brats. Remember, this is not a just regular job. It don't have a rank, but the pay is about the price of an S-class job. Be careful. Makarov said as the three teens smiled into him. See you then, master. Laki waved a hand. We're off. Kana starts to walk away. Naruto just gives a nice guy pose while walking away followed by Laki. Uzumaki Naruto, if this really were an S-class job, protect the two brats. I know you can Makarov said in his mind while turning his back to the guild, upon which welcomed by a worried voice from your regular barmaid. Master. Marahin then come running after Makarov arrives at the guild's bar, sitting cross-legged. One of the requests for an S-class job in the second floor disappeared. What? A request is gone. Wakaba replied. Who would do something like that? Macau said in a thinking pose. The cat. A familiar arrogant voice echoed within the guild. It is from Laxus. I saw a cat with wings tear one of the request off. It's happy. Marahin just muttered, which means, it is Natsu and Lucy. This is quite a serious violation of the guild's rules. If they make it back, they must be expelled. Right, Jiji. Laxus grinned evilly. But with their skills, I doubt they can make it back. Laxus, why didn't you stop them if you already knew it? Marahin said while giving a rare glare and threatening pose to the arrogant blonde. I think I just saw a cat snatching a piece of paper. I actually have no idea it was happy. Laxa said as if taunting the barmaid. And I never would have thought that Natsu would go on an S-class job. Marahin gives of a glare with killing intent into Laxus. It's been a while since I have seen you look at me that way Laxus continues to talk. Not good. Which request is missing? Makarov inquires. The cursed island, Galuna. Marahin replied while not removing the glare from the arrogant blonde. The guild members who have heard it react in a surprise. Laxus. Bring them back. You're the only one who can bring Natsu back by force. Then, a certain ice wizard interrupted. I can't let that one ride, Jai San Gray looks at the old man, suggesting that he will be the one who will bring Natsu, Lucy and Happy back to the guild. Page break. The two female mage and a young sage were sitting on a train that will transport them to the capital. The train is the mostly used transportation means on Earthland if someone needs to travel from towns or cities within the kingdom of Fiori. Naruto is amazed about the vehicle's speed, since shinobis can only use their stamina and speed to reach into the next town in the shinobi world. However, Naruto still believes that it is faster to hop into trees than riding on a train with scheduled trip. But he has some fine ladies along him so he can't able to do so. They have reached the capital without much talking. Kana has been asleep the entire time in the train after drinking a bottle of alcoholic drink while Laki is reading a book. Not wanting to meddle into his teammates, Naruto just stare at the train's scenery outside of the window, enjoying the view of the seas, forest, mountains that the train were passing through. Even though Laki seems to be reading a book, she takes a glance of Naruto every once in a while. She wanted to talk with Naruto however, with Kana on board with them, she's afraid that the brunette beside her will tease her about it. However, looking at the blonde guy in front of him right now, as his hair were being blown by the mild wind and his face as peaceful as the sea, with his blue eyes staring into nothingness, she can't help but imagine how handsome this guy is. Why am I thinking of him like this? Laki just blushed from the inside. She is still wondering why this guy have such a different aura within him that is different from her male guildmates. Was it because he saved her? Or because he is strong? Or is it that he is not as crazy like Natsu and Elfman? She didn't know anymore. There is something about him that makes her interested on him. Now that she have thought about it, Laki remembered a part of their conversation the other day. Naruto don't have much experiences with girls. 
She is surprised, seeing this guy is definitely handsome not just for her, since she believes that Marahin and the others were also thinking like her based on their reactions. At the same time, somewhere within her, she is happy that the boy don't have special for him as of the moment. She is still wondering what kind of girl that Naruto used to like before giving up his feelings for her. And why does that girl rejected him? She can't focus her mind from what she is reading and just thinking about some other things until they reach the capital. The trio walked out of the train station and ventured slowly towards the town. The town has much more people and more busy than Magnolia. After all, this is the capital of Fiori, where the main castle of the kingdom is located the castle that towers over everything, and the resident of the castle is none other than the king itself that governs the land. They asked for directions regarding the city hall and after arriving at the place, they were greeted seriously by the mayor of the city. I didn't expect that Fairy Tail will send wizards the next day after the request has been sent into your guild. The mayor talk in a serious tone. This is serious Naruto just thought based on the body language of the mayor. Are you the one who sent us this request Mr. Mayor? Kana presented the request poster while pointing it to the mayor. Actually not. There is another person who sent that request. That person knows that you will be asking me directly once you have arrived here at the capital. He wants to conceal his identity for security purposes. Mayor answered. I have informed him already that you guys are already here and he will be arriving at any moment. How come you can't tell us who is the request sender, Mayor? We will eventually know it once the request sender has arrived, right? Locky inquired. It is better that the sender himself tells you the entire details. Please wait for him. I will go out for a while. If you may excuse me. The mayor heads out as if to avoid further questions from the mages. The trio came to think that this is something serious. It seemed like you were right, Naruto. The person who has sent the request prefers to hide his identity and has a connection to high-profile person in the capital such as the mayor. Locky said looking into Naruto. Not just like that. The mayor itself don't want to reveal the details, as if he was instructed no to. So that person who sent us the request might be someone that has an authority above the mayor as well. Naruto just concluded. Hana just nodded. Now that you have mentioned it, I think we have stumbled upon a troublesome request. Then followed with a sigh. Few minutes have passed and the crowd outside the city hall suddenly got quiet, getting the attention of the trio, so they stare at the window of the city hall. They were currently in the waiting room of the building. They notice an elegant vehicle has just arrived and bodyguards escorts two people with high-profile clothing. Impossible. Locky just muttered. The king of Fiori, the king from the Grand Magic Games. What is he doing here? Kana said with surprised eyes. The king. Maybe he really is the one who have sent us the request Databeo. Naruto said in a natural tone. After several minutes, the king itself, along with the king's advisor and the mayor, entered the waiting area where Naruto, Kana and Laki are currently staying, much to the surprise of the two female mages, while Naruto didn't change his emotionless face. Each of them take a seat, facing each other, while the bodyguards were left outside the door of the waiting area. Pleasure to meet you, fairy tale mages. I am the king of Fiori, Tomei Fiori. Thank you accepting my request. The king bowed politely. Kana and Laki bowed as well while Naruto, simply not knowing what to do, just followed the gesture of the two. It is an honor. I am Kana Alberona, this two were my fellow guildmates. Naruto Uzumaki and Laki Olieta. We are mages from Fairy Tale. We have come here in response for your job request. Kana leads the introduction since she is more experienced in this forte than her guildmates. Olieta Laki. Good morning. Laki smiled. I am Yuzumaki Naruto at your service. Naruto said while touching his forehead protector and his usual grin. As this fairy tale wizards can really handle your request. I at least imagine that they will send Urz or Mistigan, much better if Laxus, for this. The king's advisor said. By the way, I am the king's advisor. May we hear out your request first? Kana said while holding back his annoyance to the king's advisor. Laki just stared down at her lap while Naruto narrows his eyes. The king just nodded, then starts talking, a dark guild, known as Black Crow, have kidnapped my daughter. Kidnapped Locky and Kana responded at the same time. Naruto narrows his eyebrows further. And they were asking for something for them to return my daughter. What is it? Naruto inquired. They want me to step down from my throne as the king of Fiori. The king said while gritting his teeth. So the king only has two options. Either to step down into his throne to get her daughter back, or let her daughter suffer from that dark guild. I am against sending wizards into Dark Guild to rescue her daughter, since it will definitely disrupt the negotiations however, the king have already sent a request to Fairy Tail before I knew it. The advisor mentioned as if pointing out the king's mistake on sending his request to Fairy Tail. Naruto ponders about the situation. Something is not right. So what do you want us to do then? Naruto said looking at the king. 
as the king's advisor, I humbly request for you guys to disregard the job request and we will continue with the negotiation. This is not just for the king. This is for the king's daughter and for the kingdom's sake as well. The king's advisor answered. I may sound disrespectful to you, but I am talking to the king, not to you. He is the one who have sent the job request after all. Naruto gives a glare to the advisor. The advisor then retreats a few steps due to the pressure and evaded the cold gaze from the blonde. Naruto Laki muttered as if to stop Naruto, but Kana held her shoulders while lightly shaking her head, signaling Laki not to interfere and let Naruto continue. Please please save my daughter the king bowed down to the mages. So you choose to have us save your daughter and not to step down as a king, am I right? Naruto spoke to the king. I am willing to step out of power just to save my daughter from them. However, I cannot do that. I have promised Risha that I will continuously take care of the country along with my daughter the king continued. A promise. Naruto thought. May I ask who is Risha, king? She is my deceased wife she is the one that named our daughter as well. She named her Hisui. The king answered. My wife made me promise to protect this country and my daughter for as long as I live before she die. That clears things. I may not know your wife that much, but she reminds me of my mother. Great to know that you really want to fulfill your promise to Risha-san, king. Naruto gives a warm smile to the king. We'll be taking the job. I promise you that we will take your daughter back Databeo. Laki smiles while Kana taps Naruto's shoulder with a grin. The king smiles as well, while few tears were rolling down his cheeks. Are you sure about this, king? This decision can endanger Hisui-sama's life. The king's advisor retorted. If you are the king, what will be your choice then advisor-san? Laki questioned the advisor. The advisor were surprised by the sudden question. But replied strongly, I will choose my daughter over the kingdom. I will step down as a king. Naruto then taps the king advisor's shoulder, is that really your decision? Or an advice for the king? Or your expected decision from the king? Naruto answered back. I didn't expect fairy tale wizards will be this disrespectful. The advisor just shrugged of Naruto's question. Then he walks out of the waiting room. I also didn't expect that advisor Sen is a rude person. Laki said after the advisor have closed the door. How come such a person is your advisor, king? He is my brother. My wife didn't actually like him. But he makes his way up to the kingdom, and before I knew it, he already is my advisor. The king said. He have saved the kingdom from financial crisis several times, so I'm actually in debt with him. His advisors were very helpful. He is actually quite close to Hisui. The last information caught Naruto's attention. You have said that Hisui Haim has been kidnapped by a dark guild, right? What is the exact situation of the kidnapping? When did it take place? This happened inside the castle two days ago. The mayor interfered. The Dark Guild was able to breach the castle security easily, and what makes it surprising is that there were no fights happened during the kidnapping. The only sign of retaliation is from Hisui-sama's room. Here is the picture from the scene. Naruto, Laki and Kana looked at the picture at the same time. The princess's room became very jumbled, all of the items were out of place, the cabinets and the room is very messy. The three just nods and returns the picture to the mayor. Where is the current hideout of the Dark Guild? Naruto asked the mayor. In the outskirts of the capital. We were the only ones who have known this information due to the negotiations for the princess and no legal guilds, except you three knew this information as of the moment. We better go then. Naruto said while looking at Laki and Kana. Wait Naruto. I know you were strong. But we are up against an entire dark guild this time that has enough guts to challenge the kingdom. Maybe we should request additional mages from the guild. Kana said. I agree with Kana, Naruto. I am just a new guild member just like you. The Black Crow Guild definitely has powerful wizards with Black Crow Laki suddenly act as if she is alarmed by the guild's name. What is it Laki? Kana asks in a concerned tone. Kana, I have read in a journal before I enter fairy tale that the Black Crow Guild is one of the rulers of the Balam Alliance, along with the Eurasian Says, Tartaros and Grimware Heart. They are the four guilds who have overall power over other dark duels. Laki said with a worried tone. Kana is surprised by the new information. Given the Black Crow Guild status over the Dark Guilds, it is one hell of a powerful guild. But not just that. If it really has a high status for a Dark Guild and it also has control over other Dark Guilds, we may also need to deal with several Dark Guilds as well in this request. This definitely is an S-rank request. Naruto, we should head back to the guild now. This is serious. Laki asks to Naruto. We will be facing powerful wizards and a powerful guild to top it all. Don't worry. I promise that I will protect you too Databeo. Naruto smiled. And besides, you have already known that I have already fought in a war. So I am used on handling multiple opponents, no matter how powerful they are, at the same time. And I have already declared that we will accept the request. I will never go back to my words. 
That's my ninja way. Laki and Kana just stood there and cannot help but smile. The words from the boy removes their worries from the upcoming battle. His words has warmed and also the felt that they were safe as long as they were with him. Naruto then became serious. And besides, if we wait for backup, things will go out of favor, if my hunch is right. What do you mean? The king asks in a worried tone. We will need to gather enough proof first. To get that proof, we will need to proceed now. Naruto said seriously. He bows, then starts walking towards the door. Laki and Kana also bow to their king and follows Naruto. Fairy tale. The king once again called. I will leave the future of my daughter and this country in your hands. Please. The three fairy tale members starts walking away outside of the city hall towards the outskirts of the capital, while the king and the mayor watches them from the window. However, the waiting area where the two were currently in suddenly became cold and dark, and all of a sudden, the king and the mayor fell unconscious on the floor, with someone grinning from the shadows of the room. Based on the client, the king have hired a three-man team from Fairy Tale to rescue his daughter. The most prominent known member of the team is the card magic user, Kana Alberona. The other two seems to be new members. A voice from a specific place talked towards another shadow. Kana Alberona with two new members. Looks like Fairy Tale's heads are getting more and more bigger, thinking that even newbies can handle us. The shadow spoke. We are Black Crow, one of the most powerful dark guild that stands side to side with Grimware Heart, Horatian Says and Tartaros. If Fairy Tale really is taking us lightly, then send an entire guild that is under our control and eliminate that fairies. You guys can handle them while I take care of the princess. The figure then starts walking away. Yes master. As the informant walks away from the shadow. The man who commanded the informant is the guild master of Black Crow. Then he walked towards another room. There an 11-year-old girl with jade-colored hair and eyes were staring out of the window. Isui Haim, your uncle have informed us that your father have hired assassins and sent them here to kill you. The man said. Father no, the king, really wants to kill me. He will go that far just to get me out of his ways so he can continue ruling this country. The princess, the daughter of the king, Hisui, narrowed her eyes. That is what it seems. But you don't have to worry. We will take care of the assassins before they could even get here, Hisui Haim. Thank you. But I don't want you to kill them. I want to talk to them. They were hired by my father using the money of the government. Or they were blackmailed just to kill me. I will try to talk to them and also get information from father. This is my mother's wish, to become a princess with rightful judgment, unlike my father. Hisui said seriously. I understand. If you'll excuse me then, Haim. The guild master of the dark guild, Black Crow, walks out of the room. After closing the door, he gives an evil smile. Don't kill them. You still don't know anything, princess. That's why you can easily be manipulated. As he walks down the hallway. Meanwhile, the princess continuously stares at the window. Why have you fallen like this, father? All that my mother wants is for you to lead the country righteously and be an understanding father. Page break. The three members of Fairy Tale were now walking towards the outskirts outside the city, going to the location of the Black Crow hideout. Naruto is all serious while Laki were just looking at him. Kana is frantically looking around as if watching out for any possible attacks. Do you remember the picture that the mayor showed to us regarding Princess Hisui's room? Naruto then said out of nowhere. Yes. Hisui Haim really retaliates from the kidnappers, seeing how the room became like that. Laki remembers the picture as very messy and all of the items were out of place as a sign of someone who struggles violently. According to our information, Hisui is just an 11-year-old girl, right? Do you think, even if she retaliated, that she can make the room that messy? Especially if those who will kidnap her were mages who can just silence her easily? Naruto asked the question. The two seemed to be surprised about Naruto's information. What are you getting at, Naruto? Kana spoke while not looking at him, but her attention is on him. The princess didn't actually retaliate. She willingly comes with the kidnapper. Just remember, the kidnapper knows exactly where the princess's room were in the first place inside that big castle and easily breached the security of the castle. I think even wizards cannot get passed through that easily, except if an assassin takes care of the job. But assassins will kill and not kidnap, since it will be troublesome for them to carry another person to get out of the castle. Naruto continued thinking about those circumstances, only someone who can freely enter the castle and close enough to the princess can take her out of the castle and make her come into the kidnapper themselves. The kidnapper just makes the room messy after the supposed kidnapping, just to make it seem like the princess has violently retaliated. The two girls stopped on their tracks. Someone close to the princess. As they spoke in almost the same time and manner. Yes. Someone who can get the sympathy and the trust of the girl and also knows her inside and out to easily manipulate her decisions. We only have two candidates for now who can do that. The king himself and the Naruto stops halfway. The king's advisor Laki just pondered. 
but the king said that advisor San assists him several times by providing proper advice right. If he really has bad intentions, why will he need to assist the king? It is his job after all. And surely though, you will not doubt someone who is always beside you and assisting you right. Naruto just answered. I see. That's why he don't like the king's decision about calling us wizards to rescue her daughter in the first place. Kana concludes. Then why don't we just get back to the city and beat down that advisor so that he can ask the Dark Guild to free the king's daughter. We don't have proof. And also, he is a high-ranking official. It will be bad for the guild's reputation to attack someone like him right? Naruto answered. So we will need to save the princess first and see why did the princess willingly joins the kidnappers. That way, we can determine what will be our next course of action. The two girls just look into Naruto with surprise painted on their face. His observations and analytic skills are quite something, seemingly like he is very experienced in this field. Naruto just smiled seeing the girl's reaction, then thanked his shogi training with Shikamaru for six months before his fight with Sasuke and also his education with the Sage of the Six Paths in the Dimension Rift. He knew that his thinking ability has improved well, however, he still is the same idiot outside of serious situations and battle. However, sudden movements out of nowhere echoed through the outskirt as if preparing to attack them head-on. Naruto, Kana and Laki noticed this and the two girls prepare themselves for the upcoming danger. Meanwhile, Naruto kneels his right knee into the ground, leans over, the uses his middle and index fingers to touch the ground. The two girls wonder what Naruto is doing. Naruto, looks like the Black Crow Guild have already sent us a welcome party. I think we should prepare to fight now. What are you doing? Kana questioned the blonde. Naruto just stand up from his current position while muttering, I just tap the ground to determine the number of incoming opponents. They are about 50 and none of them will pose any threat on us. So just relax Dadabeo. Naruto smiled at the two girls. Then, a number of opponents arrived out of nowhere. They have mischievous grins on their faces. They were the entire member of one of the Dark Guilds working under the Black Crow and is sent by the Guild Master of Black Crow as if to stop Fairy Tail from going into their hideout. Some of them were laughing and most of them were drooling, seeing two beautiful women in front of them will definitely give them a great night after this fight. Ana Alberona, Card's magic user of Fairy Tail, we never thought that you were this beautiful in person. Also wearing a bikini while attempting to attack our hideout. You sure really want to experience one great night. One of them said aloud. Kana, hearing this grits her teeth in anger. And also the young glasses girl, don't worry too much. You will experience every possible happiness that Kana might experience as well. Just come with us peacefully. Don't even think that you three could stand a chance against us. Another shouted, making Laki slightly tremble, remembering what happened a few days ago. However, she remembered that someone saves her and that someone is the very same person standing beside her. Kana quickly counts the number of person in front of them. They were actually 52 mages. She then gives a quick glance into Naruto, while Naruto is just staring at them seriously. All of a sudden, Naruto just disappeared from his current location, then a thud is heard somewhere in the same location. One of the mages from the Dark Guild have fallen unconscious. Standing behind the unconscious person is Naruto, with his left hand forming a chopping position behind the neck of the victim. All of the other members of the Dark Guild were surprised by the sudden event, and before they could react, Naruto have already disappeared once again using his speed. The blonde then again appeared in front of another mage, giving a punch on the gut flying several meters away, hurtling another of his guild mate. The two fell unconscious. Naruto disappears again using his fast movement speed, then another one falls. The dark guild is wondering what kind of magic were hitting the other members without them knowing that Naruto is just using his usual shinobi speed. As bodies starts falling unconscious one by one, Kana and Laki can't help but just feel dumbstruck. A single person is defeating a number mages without using any magic at all. With a new gained confidence, both girls attack the other members of the Dark Guild with their own magic. Would make. The Shy Dam of Love. Laki slams both her hand into the ground in a feminine manner, creating wood-shaped weapons, attacking enemies from below the ground. What kind of name for a magic is that? The voice of another Dark Guild member shouted until Naruto reaches behind him and attacks him on his vital part and fell unconscious. Mokuten. That's great. Laki-chan. Naruto just cheered the Meganiko, earning a little blush from the girl. Naruto then disappears again from her vision. We can't let you take everything for your own. We are also fairy tale members after all. Laki shouted. Hard magic. Lightning, reverse tower, lovers. Jolt of fate. Kana uses a three card combination to activate her magic, sending lightning attacks to her opponents, do not underestimate fairy tale wizards. And within less than a minute, all the mages sent by the Black Crow Guild were lying unconscious on the ground. You two are great. Can't believe I have to worry that much about you too, Databeo. 
Naruto greeted the two while smiling widely. We just can't let you take all the credit Naruto. Kana smiled. Let's go and get the princess then. Laki suggested. She have gained a lot of confidence in this battle. Yeah. Naruto and Kana said in unison as the three starts running towards the hideout. Page break. Aside from Kana Alberona, the other two members were pretty capable. They have wiped out an entire guild. The informant said to the guildmaster of Black Crow. Especially, the guy with blonde hair, he defeats most of them without using any form of magic. Oh looks like those three has a fight in them. Let's prepare a welcome party then. Command all the dark guilds present in the hideout to prepare eliminating those three. The guildmaster shouts. The informant then sends message on the dark guilds who were present in the hideout to prepare fighting the incoming fairies. Page break. So this is the place Naruto stares at a castle-like hideout. Kana and Laki just prepare themselves. What is the plan now? Shall we barge in there? Kana said while pulling out random cards on her bag. Wait. We don't know what will happen if we act recklessly. We are facing a powerful dark guild with numerous dark guilds under their control. Laki just said worryingly. Don't worry Laki-chan. I am a one-man army. Let's go. Naruto said boastfully then starts running. Actually, as a shinobi, if he is working alone right now, he will set up random traps with diversions from his cage bunchons to take advantage of the terrain. However, after the fight earlier, Naruto knew that these two girls will not let him do everything by himself. So here is I'm that idea for now. Kana just followed the blonde while Laki just sighed, then follows the two mages. Naruto, you will fit perfectly in fairy tale. Laki said with a smile. Really? Naruto just continue on running. Actually, I want to set some traps first before we can proceed however, it will be better to take all of them in surprise. Since we are only three-man team, they will underestimate us and will not create complicated plans and will just try to defeat us just like this. That is what we will need to take advantage of. Kana nods in agreement while Laki just sighed again in defeat. She still can't believe that her second job in fairy tale will be an S-class level job. Running through the hallway of the place hideout, the trio were ambushed by another dark guild under the Black Crow. However, the three dispatches them without much effort, with Laki and Kana using wood magic and card magic respectively, while Naruto using his shinobi skills without any ninjutsu, but uses some effective hypersonic speed to jutsu moves. They were ambushed by another group of dark guild, but Naruto just used his shuriken cage bunshin to wipe them out. They continue on running before reaching the central place of the hideout. The central place of the hideout were consisted of hundreds to near thousands of mages from different dark guilds. Behind them were the nine powerful looking wizards, standing on top of the stairway towards the second floor, as if they were the ones commanding the dark guilds. Interesting, so these are fairy tale wizards one of the nine spoke. Defeating three dark guilds and making it here unscathed, you deserve a praise another among the nine wizards spoke. Anna is surprised to see the nine mages. These nine, they were the main members of the Black Crow. They are S-class level wizards. They are here, complete and ready to fight Kana just trembles. I can't believe it. I thought everything will going to be alright, Laki just starts to tremble. The hundreds of mages were now grinning. They already have the victory in front of them. No matter how powerful these fairies are, with their numbers, along with the nine powerful S-class wizards of Black Crow, their victory is rest assured. However, Naruto just continued to walk towards the several hundred mages, as if he don't care about anything. The mages from the Dark Guild just taunted the Hokage. What do you think you can do punk? Do you really want to die that badly? One of the wizards spoke. Stop acting too tough idiot. Do you really think that you can win against us? Another wizard taunted the blonde. Naruto just continue on walking. Naruto. Stop. We should back out for a while and plan a possible escape, this is a clearly impossible now. Laki just tremble out of fear. You have proven enough of yourself Naruto. I believe you are an S-class wizard. But against those nine, with this almost thousands of mages in front of us, there is no way we could win. Kana just shouts from Naruto's back. Naruto stops his steps, he is standing about nine meters in front of Kana and Laki. Then he turns around and gives the two girls his usual goofy smile. I told you that I will protect you guys right. Just believe in me Dadabeo. Then Naruto turned around again towards the dark guild mages. Then he leaps high enough, draws two Horatian kunais, then throws them towards the crowd of mages. The same weapon he used during his fight with Urza Kana just muttered. Just what is he planning to do? As far as I can remember, Naruto can flash quickly into those knives, no matter where he is as long as it is within the range, I think. But what can two of those kind of knives possibly do in this kind of situation? Laki just thought worryingly. Naruto threw the Horatian kunais, then created several hand signs so fast it cannot be observed by simple naked eyes. Then shouts. Kunai Tajiwu Cage Bunshin. 
the two kunais became about several hundreds, dashing towards the dark guild mages who were caught off guard by the sudden increase of number of the knives. The knives hits half of the mages, some were direct hit from their body, some are gashes, some didn't hit. About half of the mages were hit by the sudden attack from Naruto. The Horatian kunais landed on the ground, with 10 to 15 meters of distance from each other. Naruto then draws his Kusanagi sword from his waist, then starts to mutter Akachan, I will be using our clan sword techniques now. Otu-chan, I will also use the Horatian this time. Naruto channels some chakra to thicken the blade of his Kusanagi sword, so that will not be able to kill these thugs, since he wishes to avoid killing now as much as possible. Then, it happened. From midair, Naruto suddenly disappears, then appeared in one random location where one of the Horatian kunai bunshins landed, and with his fast and agile movements, attacks multiple mages with Uzumaki clan special sword techniques, and knocks them unconscious. Then he flashed again, appears in a random location where another Horatian kunai is located, knocks around 15 to 20 enemies out again, then flashes again, and so on. Within seconds, the near thousand number of mages were dropped down to half, and on each passing second, more and more of them continues to drop. Multiple bodies were sent flying or went down unconscious before they could even react each time Naruto flashes in every random location. Using Namika's clan's Horatian to keep on flashing into random kunais, allowing Naruto to perform unpredictable attacks, along with Uzumaki clan's hidden Uzumaki Ryu sword style that is developed to allow a single swordsman to defeat numerous foes, single-handedly using the combination of near superhuman speed and agility, known as Shinsoku, or Godspeed, Badajutsu and an acquired observation based pseudo clairvoyance in order to avoid the attacks of their opponents by the least possible margin and with the least possible effort in order to place themselves in the perfect position to strike in the very instant the opponent strike misses and stresses two step attacks in order to ensure that any and all who oppose it are thoroughly knocked out or incapacitated the dark guild mages were now on panic they don't know what kind of magic they were currently fighting with and they don't also know how to fight or defend on each random attacks they were knocked out even before they can react to cast a spell. All the 9s class wizards on the second floor, who were watching the scene, were no started to tremble from awe and fear for the unique magic that they were currently seeing. A single man was literally wiping an army of mages. Each of them then prepares for battle, as if already realizing that these near thousand wizards will be wiped out in less than a minute. They will now be facing a powerful wizard with very unpredictable magic. On the sidelines, Kana and Laki were just watching how the battle unfolds as Naruto single-handedly destroys an entire alliance of Dark Guild mages. They have already seen how Naruto can increase the number of blades called shuriken, and also saw how he can suddenly flash from one location to another by using an oddly shaped knife, along with his expertise in sword fighting during his fight with Urza. But they didn't expect that those three moves can be combined, and also the combination between those three techniques will have this devastating effect. Their eyes just stare into the battlefield as several flashes knocks down multiple enemies in a single movement. Actually, Naruto can either just use Horatian combined with his chakra enhanced strength or use the hidden Uzumaki Ryu sword style's godspeed maneuvers to defeat these mages easily however, Naruto prefers to combine both of his father's and mother's clan's techniques since he needs to know how effective it will be. And that hit the mark. The combined power of Horatian and Hidden Uzumaki style is devastating enough, also combining it with his own base speed that surpasses that of 4th Rakage clad in lightning armor, and with his chakra enhanced strength that surpasses that of Tsunade's, is enough to eliminate an army even before the army under his attack have realized it. Before a minute pass, all of the mages from the Dark Guild were either lying unconscious or growling in pain from Naruto's attacks, but none of them were dead. Naruto then stopped flashing, dispels his kunai cage bunshins from the ground, while the original two Horatian kunais were already collected during the time that he flashes into them. He then walks casually towards the stairway, where on top of it stands the 9s class wizards of Black Crow. What if Naruto becomes a dragon biju in fairy tale, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.